I was gonna have it print. Yeah. All right, we're going to um, call this meeting of CPDC to order. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to take um, some things out, just a hair out of order. Um, we first have a bond release request for uh, the Randall Road extension. Um, I don't know. Did did everyone get something on that? Or? It was um, it's on, on. It was on. Just the, on the in the, packet. In the yeah, packet. It was just one form. Um, so, um, uh, for our new member Heather, this is um, what happens: is that when we do a um, uh, have a subdivision, um, we uh, there's a bond that's issued so that the town makes sure that all of the public improvements are done and if they aren't then we have some way to do them ourselves um, but as a, as if a developer does work we release more and more of the bond um, so that we're not holding all this money or all this bond value that um, that doesn't need to so um, <coughs> this is um, uh, I guess over the, the since the last bond reduction um, they've uh, provided the engineering ads built for the street acceptance they've done sidewalk repairs and installed trees so um, we're just holding about 50% of the tree value of the trees um, uh, to make sure that those survive so the request is to release um, $51,290.25 of the bond um, with a established a new bond amount of eleven thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars and forty eight cents. And you need to take a vote. That's all. Um, so can I get a motion? Uh, <coughs> that we release the bond for Randall Road extension in the amount of um, yeah, that amount. Yeah. The amount of thousand two hundred and ninety dollars and twenty five cents <coughs> with the new bond um, amount established at eleven thousand dollars two hundred and twenty two dollars and forty eight cents second second all those in favor Nick showed up I can't vote oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> great thank you I'll follow up with you tomorrow okay, on this. Um, so, um, going back to our original um, agenda, the first, uh, the next item actually is a, a public <coughs> public hearing for a site plan review, uh, 259, 267 Main Street. Um, Stonegate Construction Corporation. And do we have a? Does it give you a legal notice in your packet, John? Notice is hereby given that under sections 4.3 and 
The Reading Zoning Bylaw, the Community Planning and Development Corporation, CPDC, will hold a public hearing Monday, January 13th, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. in the Select Board's meeting room at Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street. To hear the site plan review application submitted by Infrastructure Holdings, LLC, for the property located at 259-269 Main Street, Assessor's Map 12, Lots 39 and 40. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing structures in order to construct a three-story multifamily residential building with a below-grade garage, surface parking, and associated site improvements. A copy of the application and accompanying plans are available to the public and public services department in Town Hall Monday through Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on the town website the Thursday prior to the hearing. And I will just note that I'll republish that um, advertisement because the applicant is labeled as Infrastructure Holdings, which is incorrect with Stonegate Construction Corp. So I'll republish that before the February hearing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess just for to set the stage here um, uh, for this, um, We'll hear, first hear from staff if they have any opening comments, uh, uh, some background. Um, but, <clears throat> but, but hear from the, the applicant um, will, uh, of what the proposal is. The board will ask questions and, and such, and then um, turn it, uh, open it up for public comment. Um, so. Um. Uh, so this application is along South Main Street, but it's actually within the A40 district and split zoned with the S15 single family residential district. Uh, it is a proposal for a multifamily project within the A40 zoning for 24 units, um, but I will let the applicants explain more. Good evening. I'm attorney Josh Latham here tonight on behalf of Stonegate Construction Corporation, the applicant on this uh, petition for site plan approval pursuant to section 4.6 of the zoning bylaws. Uh, what we're proposing this evening is to redevelop this property at 259-267 Main Street from the existing pre-existing non-conforming commercial use of this site for use as a 24-unit multifamily residential property. Do you think we could possibly bring up a, a bird's eye view of the, the lot? That would be very helpful. <clears throat> Uh, to briefly describe the applicant on this, it is Stonegate Construction Corp. They are a residential development group. They're very experienced and they have a great reputation in this area. Uh, I will let uh, Mr. Cates speak to that uh, during the presentation. He is here on behalf of uh, The applicant is under contract to purchase this site, subject to completing permitting. To that point, they have done a great deal of work already with regards to getting permitting uh, approved. Uh, that began with a resource area delineation in August with conservation. From that point, we went before the Zoning Board of Appeals in October and obtained a special permit relative to use of a portion of the S15 district for some accessory parking. Uh, then in November, uh, we did begin uh, notice of intent conservation hearings, and we did uh, participate in the DRT meeting on December 18th. Uh, that is what has led us to this point this evening. To give you a brief background on the site, <clears throat> you may know this, you may be familiar with it. It's, it's the southerly portion of Main Street. It is a tired, um, degraded site. Uh, it was historically used uh, for a fuel oil business, so it had a pre-existing commercial use. There were two structures originally, two principal structures. One was the office for the fuel oil service uh, company. There was also a residential home. And then you can see even on this plan here that the use really bled into the S15 district. So it wasn't just non-conforming for the A40, it was also non-conforming with the S15. Uh, the site itself, it consists of two lots. The combined lots are about 4.3 acres. So it's the largest privately owned parcel on southerly portion of the industry. That's pretty significant. But at the same time, it has a great deal of wetlands, and you can see this whole rear portion here really pushes anything that happens to the front along Main Street. Uh, with regards to the topography, uh, Rini Gagnon is here tonight on behalf of Hancock Associates will speak to that point for conservation. But there is a perennial stream that runs across the site. It really um, transects it. 
and creates these VBWs that push things forward towards Main Street. Zoning is unique for this property as well. It actually has three zoning districts that apply to it. You'll see here, this is the A40 portion, shaded in blue. It's been zoned for A40 multifamily use since the 1960s. So whereas you may have many developments in town for multifamily, this has really almost always been planned for this type of a use since planning was envisioned for the town. We then have a small sliver back here, which is business A, and then the bulk of it is S15 district. So that creates some really interesting aspects of this property. The proposal itself is ideally suited for this site. 24 residential units, everything is designed to be exclusively within that A40 district. It is an as of right use. It's a pretty unusual thing to see in town, but that's exactly what's proposed here. It's what the town intended and that's what we're proposing. With regards to dimensional setbacks, it will comply with every single dimensional setback. The only item that was any type of variation was that the commercial use had really bled over with, with commercial parking, site storage. They had really not honored the zoning districts over the years. It was pre-existing, and the zoning board granted a special permit to allow us to reconvert this piece to be used as 12 residential parking spaces, accessory to this multifamily use. So that is really what's led us to this point. What I can also say, besides the fact that we comply with all zoning aspects, we also really meet this board's requirements for site plan approval criteria. If you reference uh, really any part of 4.65, we meet every one of those standards that applies here. We minimize disturbance. If you'll see, really all the disturbance is front loaded to what has already been disturbed on this site. Everything else is maintained as a natural vegetated buffer before you achieve any intrusion into the residential area of this property. It's an appropriate use for this location. It's on the southerly quarter of a main street. To the north, we have the Avon House condominiums, the same type of use. To the south, we have the Belmont Arms condominiums, the same type of use. We then have commercial use to the north. Any residential use is really well distanced from our proposal. The applicant also does a great job of really working within the, the confines of the South uh, Main Street design best practices. You'll see the concept for this plan as uh, Mr. Pisnola presents the engineering aspect of this, but the building itself is sited and massed right along Main Street. Parking and any exterior improvements are really pushed behind the building. That is a major concept of, of what those guidelines look for. There's a great deal of pedestrian um, improvement, so it allows for transit both in front of the site, within the site. There's also a proposal to use an existing municipal sewer easement for a potential walking path. Um, the drainage will be improved. Uh, parking is again going to be all situated in the back. Everything within those guidelines is very well met from a design siting perspective. Um, with that, I'll conclude my piece and I would like to turn it over to Mr. Pisnola. What I will say is, it is an ideal use for the intended use of this location, and we do meet all of these standards. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Joe Pesnola from Hancock Associates, uh, representing Stonegate Construction. Andrew, if you could bring up the PowerPoint and go to the second slide. You want the clicker so you can That would be even better. Thank you. Yep. Again, this is 259, 267 uh, Main Street. It's got about 329 feet of frontage along. Uh, where am I pointing to? Uh, it should site has 329 feet of frontage along uh, uh, Main Street. We did do a, a full topographic detailed existing condition survey, mapped the wetlands, got a, uh, an order of resource area delineation from the Conservation Commission. We do have a uh, wetland line which is shown in green here. Uh, we do have riverfront that's associated with the perennial stream that goes along there. 
Um, and we did pick up all of the details for the utilities and, and the, the existing improvements along um, within the, the site itself. The proposal calls for a single building. It's approximately 70 feet deep by 200 feet long. It's three stories with 24 uh, condominium, uh, uh, residential condominiums uh, within it. Each of the units inside has two, two bedrooms. Uh, underneath the building will be a parking garage for 35 vehicles. Our access drive will be along the northerly border on the property uh, with access into the garage. The garage will be um, have a, a secure door uh, with a key keypad for access to it. And then we move out to the rear of the property where we have the additional 13 spaces for a total of 48 spaces or two spaces per, uh, per, per unit. Uh, we've got handicap parking in the back, handicap parking in the garage, uh, an accessible route from the parking lot to the building uh, for that. We do also have a, a loading area uh, for a move-in day or for deliveries to, uh, to, to the property. Uh, as far as as far as the uh, zoning compliance for for the project. Again, the, the requirements for, for the, this site are 40,000 square feet minimum area, uh, frontage is 80, and I said we have 329. Front yard, side yard setbacks are 30 feet, and um, we've got um, 32 feet and 65 feet in the, to, to the um, side yard. The rear yard is 30 feet, but we've got 289 feet. We're well, uh, well away from the uh, rear yard because of the, the well. Uh, the maximum height in this district is 40 feet, and we're proposing this building to be about 37 feet. Uh, that will be, uh, that will also be compliant. Uh, compliant. Uh, we are required to have the, the, the one loading space, which I said that, that, that we have. The topography on site is, is fairly level up front, and then it kind of drops off to the back to the, the wetland area and, and the stream. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, is somewhat elevate um, the building pad uh, so that the parking under is, is suppressed uh, so that you won't see that from, uh, from, the, uh, from the street. Uh, and then the, the parking in the, in the back is also raised up to get up to that upper level. And there are, there are some retaining walls proposed around the parking um, to, to minimize the impact to the, uh, to the buffer and the wetland resource uh, to, the, to the back. Uh, we did work closely with the Conservation Commission early in the process, uh, actually met with them informally uh, after the after we get the wetlands line approved uh, to talk about the degraded, the existing degraded site conditions. Uh, this obviously is a, a lot of buffer zone and a lot of riverfront um, that was uh, degraded over the year. There's a lot of invasive species out there that has taken over. There's just a lot of uh, area that's really not yet, not the best wetland buffer and not the best riverfront. So there was a definite a desire by the Conservation Commission to uh, try to address that. Uh, so we have uh, a comprehensive uh, buffer restoration plan where we're going in and, um, and taking out invasives and, and planting the, the uh, buffer area to provide enhancement to that um, in addition to providing some uh, replication area. We do have a wetland impact out front uh, in, in a small wetland area that's associated with what was the back of the existing the old, the old house. Uh, so we've got some wetland impact, and we're working with uh, the commission to do that, uh, to uh, mitigate for that with the restoration and the replication. Uh, there is a desire uh, by the Conservation Commission to have some kind of pedestrian uh, linkage from Main Street to, to this uh, north-south sewer easement that, that runs along the stream uh, that they feel could be a, a 
walk a pedestrian walking path uh, that links Cross Street to uh, to Main Street. So we're working with them to uh, work out the details uh, of that. In addition, there um, we work with W to target some um, some potential issues in the stream itself with regards to bank stabilization and um, and just kind of cleaning up, cleaning up some stuff in that because that is a the stream also acts as a major uh, drainage way for, for the area and the DPW is constantly going in there or having to go in there and, and make sure that, that uh, the, the flow is there. So we've been working working with uh, them as well. So we'll, we feel that uh, we're moving forward uh, with the Conservation Commission towards a, hopefully a, a final outcome with them, a positive final outcome with them in the next month or so uh, and we'll continue to work with staff to blend the two, the two processes. Uh, at this point um, I'm going to turn it over to Randy Gagnon from my office. He's going to talk a little bit about stormwater and utilities just to uh, familiarize the board with uh, what our plan is there. But if you need me to zoom in. Sort of zoom in on the okay, for the record, my name is Randy Gavin. I'm with Hancock Associates. Um, I did a lot of the civil design work on the project. Um, I know it was mentioned previously, but uh, in advance of the Main Street paving uh, effort, the applicant did a lot of work within Main Street to kind of prepare the site for the project. Um, and that included uh, creating a new water connection located in this, this location here. Um, so this new water connection is already in the ground and ready and ready to be connected. Uh, that will provide service to the building. Uh, likewise, we're going to utilize an existing gas service located in this location here. Um, we contacted the gas company and they said that what was already there, I believe it's a two inch high pressure gas line, is adequate for the water's use. Um, for sewer, um, as I mentioned previously, there's a, there is a, a sewer main that runs along the north of the property uh, within that uh, W easement. Um, that's located, it's located here and it kind of just follows the northern boundary of the project site. Um, we're going, to, we're going to connect the sewer for the building directly into that sewer, that existing sewer line. Uh, and that's going to be for this location. Uh, for stormwater management, um, we're going to direct the entire roof, as well as about half of the paved surfaces, uh, to an underground infiltration system that will provide both water quality and uh, groundwater recharge for the site. Uh, remaining pavement uh, on this side, on the northern side of the project, we directed to this uh, extended drag detention uh, Also providing water quality. In aggregate, the, uh, the stormwater design will provide, will meet all of the uh, MassDEP stormwater management regulations. Um, so subsequent to our filing with CPDC, we've, been, we've had ongoing discussions um, with both CPDC uh, in the DRT meeting, um, as well as uh, the Reading to Fire, Fire Department uh, and RMLD to sort of fine tune some of these things, and that's sort of ongoing. Uh, I believe a little later we're going to show you sort of a progress, um, um, a progress uh, layout that will sort of summarize some of those changes. Um, I should do that now, or um, did you want to do it? Okay. No, we'll do that. Um, go to the uh, landscape plan. Sheets. So our landscape architect James uh, James Emanuel has come up with a, a landscape plan that that uh, tries to to meet the the requirements of. Reading, uh, with regard to the South Main Street design guidelines, as well as um, 
of project proponents uh, desire to really um, to have a, a, have a, a nice front yard. Um, we're obviously putting the parking in the back, so we've got an opportunity to plant out this uh, front 30 feet uh, with, with um, street trees and plantings uh, along the, the building itself, um, as well as um, enhancements around the, the parking lot it, it itself. At that point, from, from here out, it's more of a, a naturalized uh, area with, with regards to the buffer zone and riverfront. And as I, as I said, we're working with the Conservation Commission to do uh, restoration enhancement in that area, so there'll be additional plantings out within the, uh, the buffer zone itself, but those are more to um, reforest the area, revegetate re the area, provide um, good habitat and good features uh, with regards to uh, promoting the, the wetland buffer, what's in the best interest of the wetland buffer and the, the riverfront. Um, the riverfront area. Uh, we do uh, again. We within the we go to the PowerPoint. Within the PowerPoint presentation, we do speak to the South Main Street design guidelines. Um, and here, just some some pieces from that. Uh, Minimize the number and size of driveway curb cuts. We have uh, one. Uh, provide visual and textual indication of pedestrian paths. We're trying to enhance that, that connectivity between what the Conservation Commission wants along uh, the back with the walking path and provide some kind of a, a pedestrian linkage to that. Um, separate separation of sidewalks from high, highways and traffic. We really don't, um, really not applicable to us. Um, where we're not doing a, a street project. There is a <coughs> currently um, sidewalks along Main Street. Bicycle parking, we will um, we'll be adding that to the plan, uh, but we will have some bicycle uh, storage exterior to the building and, and interior to the building. Um, use of shared parking space or encouraged that really is not applicable to us. Parking located in the rear or side yards. All of our parking is either is in the back Structured parking to minimize visual impacts. We're providing 35 spaces underneath um, and incorporate both bicycle and auto. Um, so we uh, again we'll we'll be we'll be adding that to the to the plan. Um, again, driveways provide one connection to Main Street. Driveway connection is adjacent to the parcels really not applicable there's um, nowhere else to kind of share a parking parking lot uh, with regard to the drainage encourage low impact development techniques encourage rainwater harvesting size parking lines to provide proper infiltration area and support plantings um, you know we feel that our our stormwater design uh, does does incorporate that we don't have any rainwater harvesting but certainly something that we could incorporate uh, we are again taking our, our roof drainage and putting it into uh, the infiltration system in the back. Uh, with, re with regard to the, the building itself, um, we believe that we're, we're uh, providing a product that, uh, that Mr. Cates and Mr. Finnegan have used with, with Stonegate and many of their other similar type buildings. Um, and which incorporates um, New England style character with uh, stonework and uh, and fenestrations within the building facade to, to make it a, an active building. Uh, we did talk with DRT about um, this. The, the main entrance again is in the back of the building to service the parking lot, but there was a desire to make sure that architecturally the, the, the other side of the building, the main street side of the building also um, look, um, didn't look like the back of the building. Uh, so I'm willing to talk about architectural elements to try to make that look um, similar to the front to, to the front of the building, the other side of the building. Um, so on the exterior walls, um, we are using uh, a certainty product, which is Main Street vinyl siding. Um, we have. 
samples of, of the these products. Uh, the exterior compounds will be uh, vinyl shakes. Uh, we have uh, exterior trim with uh, corners and soffits and rakes and windows, um, which are which are accented. Again, we have this the stone element or the stone facade, uh, which is uh, this is Adirondack snowfall as the product. Um, and again, with the, the columns down on the uh, on the porpoise chair, that will also have uh, that that stone work to it. Um, just, just some more building specifications with regards to what we're doing. You know, bottom line is this is a uh, um, an upscale uh, project with regards to the, the finishes and treatments that. Mr. Cates and Mr. Finnegan are, are, are putting into it. They want to be able to sell the, their product, uh, the, their condominium product, um, obviously for the top dollar that they can get. So they're really trying to bring a product to the to the market that um, that will do that. So, do you have a, a new plan? So as, as Rainey said, we have been working with um, with the Reading Fire Department. They had some initial uh, concerns with regards to just uh, how to stage. We felt that the original plan that's been that was submitted to you uh, met 527 CMR one, which is the new fire access regulations. Um, but the fire department felt that okay. That's that's all well and good, but what happens? What what do we need to do when we come to the site for a, for a call with regards to bringing first apparatus to the site and then having to, to potentially bring an ambulance to the site and then have the ambulance be able to leave the site very quickly if, if someone needs to do that. So this is a this is a plan that we've been working. This is a work in progress that has not been submitted. To CPDC yet, uh, but will be shortly with um, with the rest of the revisions that are coming out of all the other comments that we've gotten from staff uh, through the DRT process and through conservation. So essentially, the the differences here is the introduction of a turnaround. That turnaround is large enough to facilitate the the ambulance vehicle. Come into the site and to leave the site, and there's ample room here to stage the first fire apparatus, and then we've added a, a backup area for that fire apparatus to to leave the site. And what the fire department didn't want to have to do that the first plan did was have the ambulance have to back there. So um, that's why they've they've asked us to do this. We still have the loading area. We still have the 12 spaces within the the, A4, the uh, S15, uh, the single space within the the B40 for 13 exterior spaces. We still have 35 interior spaces. Uh, similar I impacts or or uh, rating schemes with retaining walls and so forth. Uh, this, this retaining wall is going to get a little bit larger to uh, be able to to do that and the stormwater is going to have to get a little bit bigger um, because there is a little bit more uh, pavement for this design so this um, again this is a work in progress we'll put the polish to this incorporating any comments that we've received tonight from, from the board and from the audience um, and wrapping that into a, a revision to staff So with that, I, I think that's our initial presentation. Um, happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, I guess I'd open it up to the board. Anyone questions? Initial questions. Um, my initial question is concerning use of the property prior to this project and that's a question relative to storage of any 
hazardous materials and has that been done yet? We, we did do not only a, a phase one environmental, but it went up to a, a phase two. Um, and it actually um, it was found to be clean of any hazardous materials. So for storage or any of that, it, it again, as we said, it's a derelict site. Luckily, there was no releases or anything that needs to be cleaned. Uh, we have provided the phase one and phase two to the Conservation Commission. We're happy to forward that also to CPDC for your reference. So <clears throat> the grade on the, the right side over here is, is pretty steep right now, so I'm assuming you're filling in. I couldn't quite see that. You're filling in to get to the point, or that's where the garage is going? Yes, there'll, there'll be a, a retaining wall along this, this side, so the area to the right will be left down, and then this will, will be raised up. So this, this wall in here is about seven feet tall. So, uh, I guess to follow that on, and maybe a little explanation here, but right, the way that I see this is that, right, if I look at some of the grades here, the, you know, the street, the street's at about 95 or 94, um, and the, what, what's it, the, the um, garage, the floor of the garage is at 93, so you've got a, you've got a, one foot excavation into the garage and then so the garage even though um, technically is underground because you're filling up dirt around the exterior of the garage wall the top of the garage will be nine feet above street grade with a 40 with a 30 seven and a half building on top of that. So essentially, we're talking about a 47-foot building above street grade. Okay. Something about like that? I mean, just so that we have a picture of what That's we're talking about. Right. We, we, we will have an embankment here uh, that will go from the, from the 95 up to 101. 101 will be the, the ground grade at the front of the building. 103 is the first floor. So, so that's 101, six feet, six foot of slope, slope. So why don't you think you're over the building height? Def the def definition of height is taken from the average proposed grade. Uh, Prior to development? No, after development. It's around the perimeter of the building. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. <coughs> In the downtown district, but not in the regular zoning bylaw. Yeah, we met. We met on a couple different occasions with um, Mr. DePal, the building commissioner, to make sure that we we weren't just interpreting the definition, but we were consistent with his reading of the definition. couple of things, I guess. Uh, um, I did find it interesting in this Oasis presentation kept pointing to how they met all of the regulations, which you do, but not really the new stuff we put in place, which is really the intent of what we're trying to do on South Main Street. Right, there's no, there's no uh, mixed use intention here. There's no affordable component to this. No, I mean, this is, just to clarify, like this is in the A40 zoning district. So the mixed use, yeah, no. Okay, just want to make sure we're okay. Steve Swenson doesn't say. This doesn't. This strip doesn't come through here. This. It's not. We didn't put it in the overlay in place. We did it in business A. Sorry, can you say that? So there, there isn't the ability to do the mixed use here. Um. I would have to look at our zoning, but this is not the area where we just added mixed use at town meeting. This is an A40 zoning district. We added it into business A. So it's it's along South Main Street. Right, so yeah. it's 
you know, in the vicinity of business A, uh, but it's not. So you think that the what you're calling the front facade is actually the back of the building, right? On this? Yes. Around on the east side. And you think that the west side, the street side, is going to be pretty much the same? <laughs> Minus the entrance canopy? Minus the entrance canopy. Uh, we have to Yeah. And what do you think you're gonna do what do you think you're gonna do for mechanicals for the units? Are you gonna have like through wall splits or something? Be happy to. Um, for the record, my name is Eric Cates. I'm from Stonegate Construction Corp. I'm here tonight with my partner, Jay Finnegan. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, Jay and I have been working together for 30 years. Um, we've done 17 other projects similar to this. Um, the way this one's designed is unique for Reading itself, but um, similar multifamily with uh, underground parking and single floor living on um, three levels. Um, so we've basically taken the concept here and uh, are bringing it to the Main Street site. But to address the, the idea of uh, what's the front, what's the back, um, in the plan set there's um, floor plans. And if you look at the floor plan, there's eight units per floor. Um, essentially there's a central hallway that runs down the middle. There's units on the front of the building or, and the back of the building, however you want to decide what the front and back is. So essentially what the front looks like, meaning the entrance where the front door will be, is very similar looking to what the back looks like with the same sort of uh, patios or balconies, um, same windows, same uh, proposed siding, things like that. The only difference is you don't have the main entrance in the center of the building. Um, and as far as the um, utilities, uh, each unit would have its own individual um, air handler inside the unit, but there would be central air conditioning. All um, the condensing units are proposed to go up on the roof so they're not visible um, from street level or from any of the units. So, I, I'm sorry, <clears throat> um, you're turning me around. The f what is referenced here is the front first floor plan, right, in the front bill, the front, the front elevation is in fact the side that does not face the, the street. Correct. And the, the plan that you're looking at there, the only difference is um, there's five what we're calling bump outs there. The center one being where the entrance to the uh, building is. It, and, and so on the side that faces the street, there will be no front door. There's no front door. There's actually um, two um, egress um, doors. There's two staircases on that side of the building. So you just would have two small doors. But in essence, what these look like, these um, you know, towers, these bump outs here, they're the same front or rear of the building. Same design element. <coughs> but no front door. Correct. No. So do you think you'll change the material for that most center section between the balconies here yeah um, we, again you know we brought the materials with us tonight to show you um, what we would uh, what we're proposing we also have an actual picture that was it was shown in a previous slide here that we can pull that up if you'd like that's an actual building um, that we've just completed um, to show you how these materials have been used in, in the real world um, but again you know we're here uh, tonight uh, for some input as well and you know we uh, we're proposing the uh, stone facade for the center, and we could um, bring that element to the this section of the building, which would be the roadside. Yeah, I'm just thinking that otherwise it'll just be a big run of you know vinyl siding between the towers as well. Sure. We can just run and we have done um, the, uh, the the uh, texture changes, the uh, um, the element, siding elements there on the bump outs, but we can certainly add the stone element to the, that side as well. It's um, 50 feet or so without the, without the benefit of the center bump that you're getting on the back side. Yeah, here to here. Yeah. Yep. That's why I was just suggesting. You don't have to bump it out, but if you change the material, sure. if you went, no, I wouldn't do the cedar. But if you went to something more like a front face, it, I think it would look better. 
considering that's the side most people will see. So, from the, from the street side, I got confused with putting the front and the back, but from the street side, does the embankment go up to what the base of the building is, or is it the embankment and then more wall and then the base of the building? Um, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's, um, you'd have the street, there would be a retaining wall that's shown on the plan, that the street trees, I believe, are in front of the retaining wall, Joe, and then yeah. that's more of a flat area between the retaining wall and the building with more landscaping on top of the uh, that area. Right around the building will be similar to this this, this photo. So you'll have an, an embankment because you'll never get that up to you won't see any of the garage. There is a garage. Is the garage on the side? Yeah, in, in this case, it'd be on the right side. But there's a garage under this building. So it would be very similar to this. You won't see any any part of that. As we move or, as we come in the entrance, that embankment will wrap the building be a retaining wall on either side of the entrance going into the garage. So from the street, you'll still still just see the embankment, uh, the landscape. And may we see a view from the, from the street side? Uh, we just have the architecture. So just draw it on there. There. This is the street. Yeah. Like right around the slab elevation. Up here. Yeah. And there's no sidewalk in front of there. That's correct? Sidewalk on the street. There's just sidewalk. a street. There's just on the street. There is an existing sidewalk. On the street. On Main Street. On this side? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, that's not to imply that their concrete is showing from there, it's that the land is sloping up to the... Yeah, this, this will be in a slope, which will go up to, to there, and, and landscaping, trees, uh, bushes, shrubs will all be there, and as, as I showed you on the, the landscape plan, it's, it's, a, it's a heavily landscape uh, front facade. So there'll be street trees along here, on the foreground, and then uh, building plantings and so forth. Because we want those first floor residents to also have a sense of privacy. It's our first uh, project that we're proposing in Reading, but one thing we've never been accused of is, is skipping on landscaping. So we will certainly show you uh, some actual pictures. I know, the storage area. Other choice. things, yeah. Okay. You look good day one. So the street trees are in front of the first wall. Obviously, we're trying to create some privacy too for people yeah, outside the building. Then there's a kind of a second second row of ornamentals and then shrub shrubbery along the green benches. And these um, these indents, the al alcoves, provide the patio spaces for the lower level. Yeah, so um, this, that landscaping plan ends up for this to, um, project being crucial for the um, for the front of the building um, for our front of the building um, uh, because that's right that that ends up what the that's the street line right it is that slope in that in that. Um, um, in those that landscaping and I I think that I mean my eyes are bad but uh, I think that I even see labeling on here that doesn't necessarily match the plant schedule so um, 
because there's a KB on here. I, I don't see the KB in the schedule. So let's make sure that we've got, you know, sort of like a good representation of what um, sizes and calipers and, Certainly. and everything. No, as, we, as we're um, <coughs> revisiting the plan with the fire department changes and conservation changes, right, you, the this landscape yeah. architect will re-engage okay. and make sure that that's all right and ready. Right, because you've got a trick here, right? I, I understand this. The trick is to provide um, to provide an, enough um, screening for those, so that those first floor users can have can use that that little patio that's out there, um, but not so much that you you just have a have all shrubs and you can't even see your building, because um, I know you don't you, you don't want that either. So I, that's why that's why you, you that's why the landscape plan. architects get some big bucks, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Other questions from the board? Um, questions or comments from the public? I just ask that you um, uh, state your name and address. Mark Schaefer, I'm a trustee of Belmont Owners Condominium at 239 Main Street. How much distance is it from the back wall on Main Street to the sidewalk? And you say you, you aren't going to do anything about the terrible sidewalk that's existing there right now? The, the building is 30 feet off the street line. The sidewalk is, at, is on the street side of the street side. So it's 30 feet from the back of that sidewalk to our building. And right now we don't have any plans to do any, any work on that within the street. Again, we were we work with DPW because they they were doing a pavement plan trying to rush that on at least the base course down we were facing a moratorium um, if they had paved so we worked closely with the gas company and the water department to get those utilities off the, off the street um, so that we wouldn't have to violate or ask for a waiver from the moratorium uh, once once Reading paved Excuse me, one more um, thing. You mentioned the mor moratorium. Sorry, could you address all of your questions to the chairman? You mentioned the moratorium. Well, the Main Street was paved before they dug it up for the line to run into this property. I, I believe what he said was they got their utilities, some utilities in there so they wouldn't have to um, dig up the street that was just recently well, paved. The street was dug up after the, up to run those lines. Um, right. There's there's yet to be another top course. Uh, I right, um, yes, Julie. Yeah. So that. there's still going to be another course that gets put on top. Yeah. So, um, although I guess uh, uh, I, I'm getting um, unit right. You have your. There's already a, you're using the existing driveway, the curb cut. Is yeah. that so? You're going to need something from. Right, we were Mass DOT and some some roadway work. I mean, the apron there, you can't have, you know, 90 degree quarters there. You're going to have to have something there. Right. Um, I don't know how uh, how wide is this is this driveway? 24? 26. 26. So you will have a little bit of work there in the, yes. in, in the, the right We way. have to relocate a utility pole, so there'll be a little bit of work with that as well. Other questions, comments? All right. Jeremy? Sure. Um, you mentioned about adding a crosswalk. Was that across 28 or across the driveway? Um, just across the driveway. So uh, I think that, right, you have a good start here. Um, um, I think that, uh, right, so we're going to expect to see another site plan that addresses um, a revised site plan that, that incorporates that new um, driveway. Um, Yeah. understand what that's actually going to look like. Yeah, I think what you've heard, right, the, the concern here is this, you know, is the massing of the building and the, in this, and how that plays to the street. So, um, 
to the degree that you can provide that, um, you know, a, a rendering or something that so that we can we can view that that massing and how that sits with the with the uh, public space. We can do a render of the the street side of the building that yeah. just like we have one for the front, and we can add the different um, stone element to that building and bring that to the or submit it. We we do have a just a quick response letter to uh, the initial planning uh, staff comments and engineering comments. Okay. Uh, which is for All right. Sure. sure. Mm -hmm. um, right, and and obviously you saw like we see the we have the engineering letter right. There's a, a couple of things that they still feel is is open that need to be addressed. Probably as yep. you work through, and as you work through. Basically, what we're saying in, in response okay. to those is yes, we will address that on the on the next revision to the plan. Okay. Other. Um, question is that driveway going to be adequate for the size of concrete vehicles and other construction vehicles? Yes, 26 feet should be ample for, for all of that. That's one of the things that we needed to provide to the fire department is what they call a swept path analysis, which shows the fire truck moving into the site and around the site. So generally, if we can accommodate the, the largest of the ready fire uh, apparatus, then that will also play suit to construct the vehicles and not the trucks. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, one question as you're talking about the fire truck. I, I thought I noticed that like the hatching on the other plan for the little turn of for the turnaround was different than the rest of the pavement. Are you planning yeah. yeah. So are you planning something different in that space or <coughs> in terms of a pavement no, type? Just it'll just be striped uh, fire, it's, that's just striping. Fire lane. Okay. Okay, that's not indication of a different pavement type the material, or. no. We we may right now the we introduced this island um, and the um, the fire, we wanted to landscape it, but the fire chief wants to drive over it. So we we will be proposing a, a different material in there, like or something. Or yeah. cobblestones or what have you, <coughs> but something that they can still drive over, but gives a visual break to an, just an expanse of paper, uh, balance the two. Sure. Um, the the trail area on the sewer easement that it sounds like you were talking to conservation about, um, is there enough room, it's kind of an interesting idea, but is there enough room so that the trail itself doesn't have to just be angular along, <coughs> along the easement so that it could be a, a, a pleasant walking path, not just super angular? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be angular, it's going to be very straight line when we get up back because it's coincident with the sewer easement. Yeah. And there's a kind of a balancing between Sewer department having to maintain that corridor, it actually being classified as a corridor of vegetated wetlands, so there's a, minimum, there's a limit to what anybody can do back there. Yeah. Uh, so it'll just go right along the stories. But yes, I think we can, we can be under getting back. Right now. So will trash pickup be private or will oh, it be town? Sorry. Good. We'll just skip that one. Um, we will have an interior trash room, uh, so there's no need for an exterior dumpster. And it'll be a private pickup, and on the day of private pickup, the uh, vehicle will come into the site. They'll go into the garage. They'll have access code, the access code to go in there, retrieve it from the, the trash room, and take it away. One last question uh, about walking again. If, so if, if someone who is living there, wanted to just walk somewhere nearby. Would their way out be through the back side door and down through the big driveway, or is there another way for them to get out closer to the street? They would be go up the, the back main entrance in the back and come around. Come around. There'll, be a, there'll be a sidewalk along here. So come out this entrance, down and around. Yeah. 
But somebody could go down into the central corridor and then come out the two egress stairs, right? To the, front. the egress stairs, yeah. And so how are those? Well, you, you walk way out. I'm sorry. There will be a walkway connecting the egress door from the two stairwells out to the streets. I don't know if we propose be. that. We're not proposing that currently. Well, how you, you need an exit discharge right from the building for code. You need to get away from the building once you exit it. So how that gets to be paved or hardscape? Path and exit. They don't need a pathway. You absolutely do. No. Yeah. You can't just exit into some muddy spot. But, you know. At least for some distance, you need to travel away from the building. When you do your landscape plan, yeah, just just have that resolved to figure out. How the yeah. We've done it out there. Okay. Some of the links we can add it to this. Whether you're board. going out to the side or whether you're coming straight out to the street, just. Let us know when you're done. I guess the other way that I would leave is down the garage, down through the garage and out the garage door. That's right. I mean, too. I'm just thinking about, okay, you know, if you yeah. want to do it, not take the car. Is, yeah. there, is there an inviting way to do that, too? It would be nice to see. The effect of overflow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I, I thought that for ADA reasons, you have to have like 50% of your exits have to be accessible. So you might want to check to make sure if any of those need like an accessible pathway, which could be impacted by the slope. So that would determine what it's really doing. Okay, so we'll continue this. Other, I don't want to cut folks off if they have other. Um, our, our next end. meeting is February 10th, and we can put them at 7:45 if that works. Thank you. What is that? February 10th. February 10th. Uh, okay. So we move to continue the public hearing. For 259 to Main Street to February 10th at 7.5. Second. Those in favor? Thank you. Okay. Before we get started with the next item on our agenda, I just do want to note, um, I, I'm guessing that there's no one here particularly f for this one because it's been continued, um, I've lost track how many times, but um, our, one, two, our fourth item on the agenda for uh, 258 Main Street, um, the, um, the applicant, um, or no, this isn't requested. Are, re are they requesting it to be put out? To, to, to be continued? continued? Yeah. Say that, but. It doesn't. It's on here. He's got a different letter. Yes, a different letter. That was the intention when we emailed about it, but then. 
Oh yeah, it does. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm sorry that um, that item will be continued to our next meeting. Um, so, no need to stick around for that if that's what you're here for. So. Um, uh, but our, the next item on our agenda. I should make a motion to continue that if oh. you're actually doing that. No, we'll do that later. I just okay. wanted to make sure. All right. yeah. um, the next item on our agenda is a continued public hearing for a special home occupation uh, special permit at 2123 Village Street. Um, Good evening, Attorney Paul Cohen on behalf of Ryan Barry. He is uh, applying or has applied. This is a continuance. This is my first appearance here, so uh, forgive me if I'm being repetitive, but we're looking to he had approval under uh, the bylaws 4.4 and 5.3. Mr. Barry um, purchased uh, the property 2123 uh, Village uh, Street uh, in May of 2019. He's done some rehabilitation on the property. Uh, on the back of the property, it's a, a freestanding uh, four bay garage um, of which there is a component um, that is designated as exclusive use easement um, for a storage area by the uh, budding neighbors. Uh, Mr. Barry uh, owns Barry Electric. He's an electrician. He is proposing to <clears throat> add office space and a bathroom above one of the stalls, which is uh, stall number four, which uh, does go over the um, exclusive use easement. And uh, Mr. Barry's business um, it does not call for a lot of visitation in the office. He's looking to have one employee there to do some bookkeeping. It would probably be more of a part-time employee, but certainly not uh, uh, any, any longer than regular business hours to go and do standard bookkeeping proposals, things of that nature. He doesn't have clients that come to the office when he submits proposals like any contract or electrician. He goes to the job site <coughs> excuse me, and does his proposal with the, uh, with the uh, customer present. Um, so because of that, uh, we believe, uh, and he submitted a detailed um, reasoning behind all of the provisions within the aforesaid um, statutes uh, that, um, or bylaws that would permit this use. Um, it's not going to change anything. It's, it's a residential use. He understands that. He's not looking to, uh, to apply for any permits uh, for special signs or anything like that. There's ample parking in the back. Uh, it would uh, create... Um, one spot uh, for, for his employee uh, when he or she is on the premises to do that accounting work and bookkeeping work uh, to park in a designated area that's already identified um, as uh, space number three. Um, there's uh, ample parking both in the garages as well as outside of the garages that are exclusively located on Mr. Barry's property. Um, the one in question again would be this last bay which is there is it's a unique building. Uh, I believe it was a, uh, a continuous garage that was shared by uh, prior owners and at some point um, that portion of the garage that was serviced by the abutters was removed. They did leave this little unique bump out here. It's not very aesthetically pleasing. Mr. Barry's plan is to actually make it a little bit more pleasing by eliminating um, cutting back and eliminating the stairs and putting the stairs, uh, containing the stairs inside and actually eliminating the door here um, that he has to access if he's going to use that door. He, he accesses that door by way of the exclusive easement. So he wouldn't even be using the easement anymore as far as the entrance. He'd be going in the pre-existing entrance here in order to access um, uh, both the garage and the proposed uh, office uh, above. So he'd be looking to do um, an, an office with a, a, a bathroom <clears throat> and a storage facility located um, on the on the opposite wall. Uh, but he did change his plans, I believe, uh, based upon the committee's recommendation, to actually add storage on this side here. I think the um, uh, forgive me if I'm speculating, but I think the committee maybe uh, identified that as storage because it's designated as exclusive use storage area. Uh, I think that's just the nomenclature that was picked by the attorney who drafted the condominium documents because this is the only storage area on the condominium documents as far as designated exclusive use here. It's a garage. Um, the intent is for it to be used as a garage, storage, and, and, and how it had been um, used um, well before it was um, uh, condoed out and separated and, and, and identified as an exclusive use area. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I will also point out to the to the board and I believe the uh, the neighbors would know that um, servicing here in the abutters is a is a common driveway it's identified as a common driveway so uh, my client and, and nobody can park actually on the common driveway by cut my client doesn't intend on parking on the common driveway nor would the uh, would the abutters park on the common driveway the idea is to um, for, for the parties to enter and and go their ways yeah. into each of their designated parking areas um, <clears throat> based upon that the uh, very limited um, uh, traffic. Uh, this, this, his business doesn't require, um, uh, you know, a, a great amount of deliveries. Any deliveries that he has as, as a contract, he either picks up, puts them in the van, or has them delivered to the job site. It may require a delivery here or there. I don't think anything more than a regular FedEx or Amazon delivery would require on a residential um, uh, unit. Mr. Barry understands the integrity of the area. Um, and that it's residential. He's not trying to make this a business, um, exclusively a business property. He's looking to operate this as a home office uh, in order to, um, he, he has the property, he can save some overhead and, and, and have his business run out of the air. That again, I don't think it'd be a, uh, any detriment to the neighborhood. As a matter of fact, I think it would be more beneficial uh, just from changing and eliminating this sort of awkward bump out here making it conform and then having one entrance so I, I, I think it actually improves the look of the structure uh, and it doesn't change the the existing use again um, other than to have you know one employee that wouldn't be there any longer than business hours thank you uh, thank you um, so I think where we left um, the, there's a couple of questions that um, were sort of remaining um, the last time we discussed this. Um, one, um, uh, one was really the the, the rights um, uh, related to that easement. Um, you know, as it's as it was stated, a you know a, a storage that doesn't it actually doesn't matter what it's called um, right. from our perspective. Um, in the sense that um, that that's you know that's an easement between the two between two parties, um, uh, and um, you know it, it may impact his ability to move forward if if they don't if if they don't agree that the use um, is is consistent, right? That's a it's a it is it is it, right? it, and again it, it, it's it's a unique situation. Sure. Would you like uh, me to address that, or I'm sorry. No, no. I mean that's 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 your that's your issue, sure. right? Um, uh, uh, our, our our recommendation was at the time was to to um, a don't do anything that 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 we thought that was um, obviously that, that could be construed as not being consistent with that easement, um, but um, but make sure that he had um, a counsel so that he sure. sort of knew knew what was going on with that, um, and then the other item. Was really was really all about parking, um, right? Um, so, so where we left it, the discussion, a lot of the discussion from the last meeting, was about the the use of the space behind that building, um, uh, access um, and egress uh, from that from that space between the between the home and the and the garage and where people. Um, where different people uh, park, um, and so which is why we encouraged him to put out this, put this plan together to to get an understanding of really um, where 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 people would park and how it would be how it would be configured. Sure. Um, so with that, um, does anyone in the board have any questions? Um, <coughs> I guess I'm still not clear on whether you have the right to do anything with that space other than use it as storage. Well, I so the the space is is um, uh, the entire uh, garage complex um, is 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 completely under the dominion and control of my client, 2123 Village Street, and all the successes and interests as well are going to have it. I would suggest, and I didn't draft the condo documents, but I would suggest that the easement itself, the, the building, it's sort of the, you know, the chicken before the egg, right? The building was already there, and they created the easement to accommodate the building. 
So they created the easement instead of you know redrafting property lines and saying we should zigzag this over and and maybe submit it to the board and get approval on on changing the plan. Um, they they did this carve out, um, but you know my client maintains the building. Um, prior owners maintain the building. This property is not considered as part of the condominium association and and, and the uh, the common elements. Uh, they don't pay a condominium due. That would go to any maintenance on that easement or anything. The liability, the insurance, everything is contained within the owner. And I say the owner of 2123 because if he sells it, it's going to be the next owner, all the successes and interest. So the, the building came after, uh, the, the easement came after. The building was already there. The building was completely and always operated exclusively by the owner of 2123. It just happened to be attached to the other uh, property. I don't know when they constructed it. They had a they put this common driveway in. I'm not sure why they conjoined, you know, and made one big building. Maybe the setbacks. They thought they get extra space, but um, the uh, the trustees don't pay any uh, any condo fees that take care of that building. The master policy is there's a carve out. And again, I, I I actually so just to. Give you a little historical background. I represent Mr. Barry in the, in the closing. My job is to certify title. The first thing that popped up to me when my when my survey came back before I got into the title was, but we have a big problem. We have a big structure that is encroaching on the neighbor's property. It wasn't until I called the attorney, the prior attorney, we got into the specifics about the easement. We did our due diligence, and that's when we discovered why it was carved out that way. So it's not covered. It's already carved out of their title policy. And, and so they've already excluded that. So they basically abandoned and said, this is yours, but the easiest way to do it, I guess, is to create this easement. Your building, you take care of it, but we gotta give you this legal easement, otherwise we're gonna have title problems. So that's the way, it was sort of a workaround, not the cleanest way to do it, but um, it was you know, adopted by the trustees, it was adopted by the owners of the property, we're all successes and interest and have to adhere to those. So what exactly is the language in the easement? Master deed, section seven. Yeah, I'm looking at the comment from staff, which is the comment that the board had last week as well, right? I mean, not last week, right. but last yeah. meeting. So it, it identifies both in the deed, um, and I have the title here, highlighted some areas, but it, it, it's it's, Specifically, specifically carved out. And I believe you, you received the first package that did contain some of the language. So on. On page one uh, of the master deed, it, it identifies um, the, the common area strip that I discussed as well as uh, on page two, um, uh, notwithstanding, uh, it's the uh, section four, notwithstanding the foregoing, it, it describes the units. The exclusive right and easement to use storage area, first and second floor is located in the garage, shown on the site plan um, as reference to section five, shall be conveyed to the owner of the abutting property, known numbers 20 Village Street, which storage area is actually connected to in a portion of an existing structure located on the center budding property. And so it, it, it carves out when it talks about all the elements and all the common areas and it specifically carves out this piece of property. Um, well, it does it both by way of the, uh, the master deed um, as well as uh, there's a separate deed that, that conveys it as well. And, and I'm sorry, I don't have to answer this one. Purpose for the easement is that's where it specifies that it's for storage, or is it broader than that? I know it, it just it says the exclusive use as designated they, as designated as storage area A. That was a de that was a designation that was made, but the 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 purpose behind it was they have a structure that is encroaching on another piece of property that again was all one, you know, I, I might have been seven or eight garages, I'm not exactly sure, but at some point the other owner took down theirs and they specifically didn't take down it up to the property line because that portion was always used by 2123. So to accommodate that use, 
they went ahead and created this exclusive use easement. They called it a storage area. It's a garage. It could be called a storage area. For purposes of our permit, it could be called a storage area. That doesn't change. We'd like to expand on that and have the ability for them to, uh, for my client to go ahead and, and operate again a small, um, his uh, home office out of out of that location. Another question, in addition to where the parking spots will be located, is mm -hmm. the traffic flow and <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, whether there was an ability to actually put a fence up um, and all those different pieces um, and maintain the traffic flow um, within that? Yeah, I don't think the fence would work because I don't think my client identified the, the common driveway that would lead up to it. So you, you, you still need the common driveway for both parties to be able to get in and out of that. From a traffic flow perspective, um, we really don't deem it to, to really cause really any any problem at all. Um, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Barry is on the road doing his business. Within that little craziness there, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I mean we have we have we have four garages and then we have spaces outside of those garages. We don't anticipate that they would ever be at capacity. It, it, it began with one with one person there, perhaps Mr. Barry comes home at lunchtime and goes in and checks in, but for the most part, his business is on the road. He has someone that's gonna be there going to books. So really, there's not an adding of any sort of vehicles, if you will, and if there was, it, would, it wouldn't be a big overlap. Um, certainly not enough to have full capacity both in the garages and outside of the garages. So I don't think traffic would be any kind of issue. I know that might be a concern for the neighbors as well. This is not, um, you know, operating, you know, if I was an attorney and wanted to operate my real estate, my, my law office business out of there and maybe I have five meetings a day and people yes. are coming in and out. It's not that kind of home office. It's, you know, it's strictly limited to Barry Electric. And, and again, electricians are on the road. This is what they do. They, they go and they propose on site so they can do their measurements and walkthroughs and things like that. Um, very rarely would he have any reason to entertain uh, people to come to his office. It's more of a bookkeeping operation. It's a place to you know, store his files, have his computer, and, and have someone there to, to keep those books. I believe the last meeting, Mr. Barry said that he had three employees. That would be two con two electricians, the bookkeeper, and, and plus himself would make four. Is that correct? I, yes. And well, it's more than that, but we don't. We only have one one vehicle, mm -hmm. one work vehicle besides my own personal vehicle. Okay, so they're using their own vehicles yes, yeah. for yeah. equipment. And, and they're, they're, they're no right. equipment. They, they, the material goes to the drop site and they get to the drop site on the, in their own vehicle and they work. I'm assuming they're electricians. They're bringing plugs and, and cable on. and so forth and tools with them. Not correct. We don't do that kind of business. It's, it's, a, it's hand, you know, they, they get to the site and they, when they perform the task. I have one vehicle that transports that material. That's it. So, they, so we don't call, they don't meet, so they don't they meet never, in an office. They never ever show up is what you're saying at your house. Uh, at the building no, to pick up supplies or anything. I stated, I stated last time they might have to drop uh, overflow off on a rare occasion, but uh, by no means they'd be there every day. I wouldn't want to live that way, and neither would anybody, I don't think so. So why do you need four parking spaces for very electric vehicles? I was just told to give a parking plan so we can show, you know, if, my, if that's my van and that's the woman who works for me, then that's perfectly... You know, I'm happy to change that any way that makes that makes sense, but it's not. We don't have no guys that drive to my to my house, leave their vehicle there, and go to work. It doesn't work. It doesn't operate that way. No, they're never showing up in the morning. It's only at night to drop off equipment. Uh, drop off on a rare occasion, yes. And what happens with everything that they've been dropping off at the storage facility? It's at some point, you, you're going to get. I'm not selling material. I mean, it's it's overflow only. It's better than throwing it in the trash. So I don't really, I don't really, I don't want inventory material. I just want to put. A few leftovers in there at that point. I have equipment I put in there, bigger, expensive tools. Okay. Thank you. So the intention is to knock off the stair. Yes. Right. And then what happens? That well, car well, that's sort of cocked to the right there will just. That back, close off the door over there so there won't be any more entrance over here. Mm -hmm. 
and you, this is the main entrance to get it to both sides of the garage. The, the stairs would be in the interior, and that's how they would access up to the second floor. Right, so that car that's parked there right now, which is parked straight in. Those are my neighbors. I understand. So yeah. I'm asking what's going to happen. Well, I, I, we don't have any problem with that. I, I think they might be sort of on the common area, but I mean, I, I, it would free up more space. I don't, uh, so. Mr. Barry's not looking to have any problems with the neighbors um, if there's room for them to park. But they, you know we have to be cognizant that this is a common area, uh, common driveway, so that people, both both parties, can get in, uh, both uh, the unit owners next door as well as my client. And, and, and said their common driveway before. Can you zoom the plan up so we can see the actual driveway? Why do you think that the common driveway is all the way up there? Or when the common driveway ends, maybe a car length past the house. Oh, well, we, I, I'd have to get the exact measurements on, on, on exactly where it ends. I, I, I got my, my survey to identify it as a common, um, but we certainly can get that information. I'm not exactly sure where the, where the measurements end on that one. Does that, uh, does that matter? I mean, I don't say I don't mean that in a glib way, but like, wh how does that play into to, to how this would operate, Nick? Well, I'm trying to understand what really happens with all the cars up in here, right? So the, the, certainly, the intent of the intent of a common driveway in general would be so that you, you obviously you can get you can get back here. So I mean, the common driveway couldn't really end there, and then you could allow parking here because then it would block the whole intent of having a common driveway, right? That's why I said it's it's a little more than a car. It, it, has, to be, it, has, to, it has to be greater so that you can get through and and be able to access because that that's the that's the. That's the point of having, the, certainly in this situation, point of having the common driveway there, uh, common uh, uh, common drive. It's it's not to park vehicles, but it's to access your own parking area, your designated parking area. Where it ends, I'm not exactly sure, but so long as the parties can get, you know, in and out. Um, so that would actually free up space. So to answer your question, it, it, this would this would free up additional space, so there's no congestion over there. For whom? For, for all. Who's, who's going to benefit? No, who's going to use it? Oh, well, this is this is on their property. So essentially, when that's, when that's removed, that can go back to them. They can park the car right in front of them. Okay, that's what I was asking. Uh, and so the common drive access is between 21 and 17, right? Between the, the two buildings on the right there. Yes. And, and that's two-way or one-way traffic? It's not really listed. In ways that and they so you come in out. That's oh, yeah, you, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. that's the way you get in and out, right? The other side, also, um, and it's really not pertinent to, to this discussion, but there's also a common on the other side as well from previous owners. Used primarily by the other by the other side, the other yeah. Side. Yes, used primarily by the other side. This is a good picture, actually. This, so this is how it was, right? So this is the this is now removed just to this point, right? Yeah, just there. Right, just okay. So, this area right here. It's still here. May I ask if we've established the use of the new space, considered an office space, has a bathroom? I see that on the drawing. Does it also have a kitchenette? No. Um, I, I'll, I'm going to open this up to, um, to um, public uh, comments. Again, um, as I had said earlier, uh, please name and uh, address. New you, what's that? New comments. Yeah, new comments. Um, so, right, we spent, I, for those that weren't here before, we, we went over, right, we were here a I, I, long time, right? An hour. Okay. Definitely an hour. Probably, probably longer. Um, so, you know, uh, those that weren't here before, I know you don't know what was said. So, uh, but, um, but, um, you know, to the to those that were, let's keep it on new comments and, and new items. So, my name is Eileen Ferrara. I live at Seventeen Village, um, and actually, we all met as a neighborhood after that meeting. So, we all are very aware of what was discussed. Um, the number one condition, which has not been met, is that Ryan Barry does not reside there. I understand in public record he has stated he intends to. He does not. 
He has a beautiful home in Wakefield with his wife and newborn child. He has two tenants that just moved in within the past six weeks. So they have at least a six month to a year lease agreement with him. So he has no intention for at least six months to reside there. So this cannot be a home office if he does not live there. The second condition was for the easement. We have no intention of approving any construction a modification anything to that structure the other concern is safety um, you just stated today that a, there'll only be one bookkeeper there there'll be no customers it is stated in record in the previous application that customers would be coming and going for business proposals he's also stated that employees would be coming to drop off equipment um, which again is not, it, there's no consistency in this report. Um, and in regards to the parking plan, if you can pull that up, the, the 21 space, 23 space, and the first space for Barry Electric, they are not functional, they are not functional garages. The current tenants right now cannot park their car in the garage space and get out. So those should not even be listed as they're, they're not functional spaces. Sorry. The other problem, Mm -hmm. which, which spaces are you saying are not the functional? Interior. The interior all, th all four garages are all four garage spaces. If so, we've had... Narrow. What's that? Because they're too narrow. Too narrow. Too we've had several narrow. days of inclement weather that I would assume if the tenants could park there, they would have been parking their cars there and they cannot. Um, the other issue is that this space, yes, it's this garage. However, it expands the length of four houses. It also is on the edge of... Um, Elliott Street for the people behind them. It also has access to Haven Street and right at the right at the end of the driveway is where there's a residential group home of delayed older adults. Well I've spoken to the residential house manager and he is very concerned about strangers and employees and other people coming and going in that space. Um, and the other issue with the parking which I know was a major point last meeting is when there's a snow ban. Where are these employees going to park? Where are their vans going to park? Um, it's been stated that they would be coming and going for equipment, so I would assume they would need to have a space to, even for five minutes. It would be impeding that entryway for all, all residents in the garage space. Okay, show us the other she just made on the screen. Making notes this time. <laughs> <laughs> About the parking part. No, that, that that comment you just made about how it spans mm -hmm. four other houses and mm -hmm. can you show us? Can you pull? Mm -hmm. So it, it spans from 31, 33 all the way to five. That is an open space all that way. Right. So there's entry and there's availability for cars to move in and out of there. Right. Okay. I thought you meant the garage. And no, no, no. The gar no. Yeah. Okay. Just that big space. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't understand your point on that one. That it's not just going to affect, you know, our major concern the last hearing was the safety of having employees and, you know, other people, you know, potential clients coming and going. It's not just the safety of that exact garage space. It expands from number five all the way to number 33. It leads into the house on Elliott Street where there's no fence or any protective barrier. And on the same thing with this um, house on Haven Street right at the corner there. So an employee coming without him being there, any other employee being there to supervise them has access to that entire space. So the safety concern expands greater than just that small little four set driveway that we have. But wouldn't that apply to any of the guests for the other guests as well? Yes, however, but we don't have guests there unless we're there to supervise. He has just stated that he would not be there. He will be out at job sites. So who will be supervising people so coming and going? So let's, you know what, I, I, that, whole, that whole discussion gets me very uncomfortable, right? We're talking about them. Who's them, right? You, you, you have people renting, leasing apartments. Um, you don't know who lives um, you know, in a, in an apartment a couple doors down from you or on the other side. I mean, the, we Reading's a dense, a, a dense, uh, relatively dense community, and we don't know everyone that's in in the community, mm -hmm. and and whether they're a worker or whether they're a friend of of a um, of of um, uh, 
someone who leases or rents an apartment, let's not get into the fear thing and fear stuff. Yeah, I think your argument should be based We just, based yeah, you, you, have a, you have some very valid arguments without getting into this whole um, fear of, of them. Okay. Um, so I just want to, I, I don't want us to go down there because that doesn't, doesn't help anyone. Um, but, right, what I heard you say was talk about the, re, um, the, his, the residential use um, the garage not working, um, you know, whether that's a valid parking locations, and then, and then concerns about you know, snow, the sort of coming and going of the of the other, of the other employees. Um, I do let let's talk about the the residential requirement. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we do have we, we, right. There's a there's a a. a um, I don't want to say valid, right? All, the, all your points are valid, but we do have a problem um, about issuing uh, a, a, a special permit until you are actually physically living as a, as a resident in um, in that building. I mean, the, the the way that this, the way the the rules, the um, language and zoning, the is all language, about yeah. And so, um, in, in, until you're a resident there, we we can't issue a special permit. Um, so that actually gets us in a little bit of a, of a, you know, um, I want to say a bind, but, um, right, because if, if this does go through, we don't want to have spent all this time, all this time talking just to go, you know, sort of delay you and then have it, have, have it all, uh, have us, um, all have this conversation again that doesn't seem like an efficient use of anyone's time. So, um, so I, I guess I'd still sort of like to move through and understand what the possibilities are here, um, but at some point we need to resolve, you know, that this, w we couldn't issue a set special permit um, until you're, you're actually a, a resident in that, um, in that building, so, and if, you, and if you never are, then we can never issue it, so. Understood, understood. Um, the, the the idea was <clears throat> to actually um, get the special permit, get the home office approved, because then it makes it more viable to actually move into the multifamily dwelling with the business there. I looked in. I looked in. Uh, I get that, but we can't. Right, we, we really can't do that. Yeah. 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 I'll be at Kegels next. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, um, <laughs> In any event, uh, I, I, I read the, the, the reservation of the right to issue the special permit home occupation uh, within one year um, as actually to be able to um, apply and receive and, and put it to use within the one year. That was my interpretation. For one year, they can issue it for but one year. But they issue it for one year. That's right. a little different. Yeah. Right. I, I actually got to read the actual uh, statute yeah. and, and the bylaw. I, I'm, I'm looking at a, a summary of it, and, and so... I, 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 it was my interpretation that they could, you could issue, and and you'd have one year to actually go ahead and, and, and do the work. And no, it's uh, no, it's issuing it for one year. Yes. Uh, At which point it would basis. be renewed. They would, yeah. they would have to come back and have it renewed, and they could talk about any issues that have come up within that year. Um, that's a very different thing. Sure. So Thank you, Pete. Sure. Um, is there a requirement for each of the units? To have four parking spaces in the condo, that each each unit just gets two spaces, correct? It's, it's not a condo. It's not a condo. Yeah, they, no they, they, they cut the condo to the abutter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And only because whether the garages are accessible or not doesn't play into this. They have four spaces out front, of just the, the same way that the adjacent property has four spaces. Mm -hmm. So whether you can get into the garage or not. Well, the point of that being brought up in the parking was to be able to continue the flow of traffic through there. So if they're not able to park in the garage, their vehicles are going to be out. They're going to impede that flow of traffic. Assuming each of them has two vehicles. Those are their designated parking spaces, similar mm -hmm. to the... One could argue that the building next door, which is proposing some green space in the deep portion of the parking, is impeding parking because they're going to have to park their cars further um, east. Which one is that? So the building has been the building has been demolished to the north. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think I got that right. North. Let's just call it north. Mm -hmm. And so the, the cars that park next door mm -hmm. are parking on this edge here, 
what their intention is to make a green space back here, whereas if they parked further up, there'd be more room for movement. So it's the same argument on this property. Just with the cars parked right here, there's the same amount of movement around this little lead edge as there is on this adjacent property. I don't know that having access to the interior of the garage for parking a vehicle matters. I thought that was the whole purpose of the parking plan that was <coughs> to be brought tonight, was to show that there would be ample parking. So the discussion that we had last time was that with the, with the rehab of the structure, of, um, um, then, uh, then those interior spaces in the garage would then be available, right? Right now, no one can park in there, I don't think, right? You, that's what you said, no but one. You could, no, if you, had, you could if you wanted to, but we didn't. But yeah, no one, no one does, as you, as you yeah. mentioned. But he, that he has to go in and do s some work to the whole structure, at which time those, those spaces would become available. So there's a sort of a net benefit. Right now, you have, you, there's, on, on this property, there's three or four spaces that can't be used to park, uh, for parking. And with the investment in this building, then those spaces would that that space would open up for um, for parking. So you'd end up with a, a net benefit because he's investing in in the building. So those that that's how we got to 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 this plan. Yes. <clears throat> Can you go back to the one with the green? I guess the premise of this is what I'm still very confused about on this conversation which is within that green the parking he could park all in that entire area it's his mm -hmm. actual area mm -hmm. you all have purchased homes with very strange mm -hmm. access points you knew that going in and you have no promise of anyone deciding to do anything with what is within that green area. I understand that we're up to a question here, but your question about where they're parking, like, they can park. I mean, if it were all residents, they could take eight cars and jam them all up in there and make a pain in the behind for you guys to do all the maneuvering. I get it that this is a conversation about another aspect of this, but you have a lot of what else? You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got a whole universe of other things out there that could be. And you have had a certain situation before, and you're faced with a new situation here. And if this situation is not approved, you could get something else. And just so within that green, it's his. And that's what I'm having a lot of trouble with this conversation. Okay. Hi, my name is Amy Weaver. I live at 33 Village Street. Um, we have concerns, uh, as she mentioned, about this residency, and um, we want some clarification from the town as to like what the definition of that is. Of the definition of what? residency, like what that entails, like how how are, how is that to be enforced? I mean, is is it just proof a utility bill? Residency. You know what I mean? Like, what what does he need to do to prove that he's actually that's a good there? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I'm not sure. We'd have to 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 get. Um, we'd have to figure that. We'd out. have to yeah get so town council to, to understand. The yeah, and, and the other people <clears throat> in town hall and then sort that one out. I mean, I do think that the town has a definition of. We definitely have a way. We have a yeah. definition okay. of what a resident is, right? Um, yeah. It's not just make a lease. <laughs> yeah. It's, he, no, he needs correct, to live there. Correct, home correct. office indicates yes, that it's yes, a home. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I still question, like, why, I guess, why do we need that? Um, the bookkeeping, I actually do bookkeeping for the company I work for. I can do it from my laptop on my couch. Um, you know, I do, in this day and age, do we really need a home office? Is it just, I'm curious really as to kind of, it feels like a slippery slope is, is basically it. Um, also, where is the current office? Boundary, no, Wakefield, Boundary Street. Boundary Street, which is why can't the home office stay there? 
I, I, again, if, folks, if, 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 if I may, that this this whole conversation, and, I, and it was already brought up by the board, you know, there is there is a, a the ability to apply for a home office because you want to work on your laptop at home doesn't mean he has to run his business that way. So first, let's let's, I, let's I, stop. Using I, I the think term, the, let's stop using the term home office because it's actually home occupation. If home occupation. Yes. Yeah. Blankets, you know, as a for sale or whatever. That right. would be the and same storage thing. too, where supplies doesn't are matter. The off. home occupation, as long as you don't have. Uh, more than one employee, I think, and uh, a lot of traffic coming in and out. They've been granted throughout the town. I think, I think, uh, but for the residency situation, which was 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 mm -hmm. raised, and and certainly we'll get clarification on, and 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 we'll have to revisit. I don't think, um, uh, with all due respect, that they've raised any issues that would um, deny a a, a a special permit in this situation. He has the ability to have a home office. He has his parking space. Uh, there's uh, what 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 some of the other neighbors say about your visitors. I mean, people at Amazon to drop packages off all the time. This is the world that we live in. So, um, I, I guess they don't want to see change. My client bought the property and, and came in and fixed it, and we just try to make more repairs. But if we can just no. if we can just he's just he's what about the property? Okay, 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 okay. 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 He did. Yeah. He did take it to the to building and try to improve it. But. Uh, um, uh, I really, you know, I, I do, um, I want to hear what you have to say, um, right? You, you spend your time to come out, but let's, um, Agreed. you know, I don't want to go over, over, uh, not that the things that you brought up were uh, going over rehashing things, but. Um, can I? Sure. Can I speak? Then? Um, I know, I'm sorry if um, you do sorry, agree, but you don't live there, so. Um, my name's Leah Bordieri. Um, I live at 28 Village Street across the street. Um, I've owned the, my property for 12 years there, and um, my concern is the property value. If this is deemed a office or a business, is that going to decrease the value of someone wanting to purchase my home if I decide to sell? Um, you know, what, how would we know? And what kind of, um, have you been in any, have you heard any other situations where, that you could compare this to? That you could, where someone that you could, that you could tell me that my like property people. value yeah. isn't going to go it, down. It's not, that's that, not our area of expertise. Yeah. Okay, so is there someone that we could bring in to talk to about property value and how that would come down or, go up but I don't think it would ever go up <laughs> you know this is a residential area and that's 12 years ago when I bought my house I bought it knowing it was a residential area um, so that's my concern and that, that's my main concern too yes and I'm Juliana Scheimer I actually live on 30 Village Street which is also across the street and I just purchased the property three years ago and for the reason of being a residential area so now I understand things could change but it's only been three years and now I made the assumption this is why I invested in the property in Reading that it was a fully residential area. So it's not changing to be commercial. I mean, you, you still live in a residential area. That is 100% not changing. What happens if he eventually it's not, it's not even a tipping, It's not even a sli it has, slippery scale. It, yeah, it, it goes no away. Tipping. There's a special permit. There, it does I, not. The zoning is the zoning period you live in a residential area. That's why this is a special home occupancy unit because uh, so the key like word being home it, which it, you have made you know it, it has to live there it can't it right it can't um sort of evolve into something else right he could only have himself in the one employee it doesn't transfer to someone else if he sells it and someone else comes in here it doesn't right there's not another this it's it's the this whole whole um idea um was put into town was you know was allowed in town as a special permit so that anyone can you know it uh, uh, can go and work out of their home if you're if you're bookkeeping out of your home on a regular basis you're really supposed to have a home occupation permit um, you know um, uh, uh, it, 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 in his case right it's going to be more evident because there will be um, one other person and and a truck that probably says you know the company you're the name of your company on it. Um, other than that, honestly, I don't see a whole lot of difference, um, and, and probably uh, not a whole lot of difference, aside from the, the bookkeeper, probably not a whole lot of difference from what 
other neighbors, maybe not your neighbors, but other neighbors around town who bring their their truck home at the end of the day, you know, um, uh, in and out. So really, you know, we did this because we, we allow uh, this type of use in, in town um, because it's a convenience for homeowners, right, to be able to, to work from home. Um, and just with the idea of making sure that it's not too obtrusive to um, to the the neighbor the neighbors in the communities. Um, in, in this this is a little bit of a different situation um, because you are all um, sort of packed in there pretty tightly. So um, it gets approved, and we notice that it is more than one. It, you know, is there an appeal situation? Is there a way to backtrack once it's? Year, Which right? is what we mentioned, what Julie yeah. mentioned before. This is a, we've only been considering this starting with the conversation from last time as a one-year situation so that we can keep track. I mean, this is the, the conversation was meant to be, you know, we talked about it and as a group here about being one year with the renewal so that if issues come up, then we have another recourse. Right, and beyond that, um, the, it's very clear in the zoning what's allowed for special home occupations, and then we'll have a special permit decision which will have conditions. And so if, uh, if he's in violation at any time of any of those things, we can take zoning enforcement. And then after that year? That's beyond that. Yeah. Any time we can take zoning enforcement. So I'm going to... The gentleman in the back, you had your hand up a number um, of times. My name is Joe King. I live at 30, 31 Village Street. Um, my concern is with deliveries. You know, he said, you know, you said that they will be delivered the uh, equipment to the, the guys are going to go directly to the job site, correct? Sure. And then you deliver the equipment to the guys once they reach your job site, correct? No. It gets delivered from a truck. That's not the company I buy it from. We don't keep storage. I don't keep that storage in the warehouse. So there'd be absolutely no deliveries to to village. I can make that possible, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So I'm the owner of 15 Village Street. I'm also a attorney focusing on real estate practice for many years. And uh, I just heard the attorney just mention about the easement. According to my law experience, I believe according to his law experience, that's explanation about the easement is incorrect because easement is the right that our village street 15 and 15 village street run to your to you and for that special purpose that's the right we grant to you and uh, that is not the ownership you own we don't talk about the previous because this is a document already been prepared and uh, recorded at the registry of deeds so we need we need to admit the effective that that recorded uh, master deed and the, uh, and the documents so the easement we cannot just change the use it's a storage and uh, when we pur we purchased our property in 2014 at that time the owner actually our neighbor uh, is Nick and uh, Nick always allowed us to use that area to do some stuff so we store our snow blower, blower there for many years until uh, we sold his house. So we still have access to that area and uh, we still store the, uh, some things in that area. We never abandoned that area and uh, that's the easement, the, the right we grant to your okay. It's an exclusive use. If you're storing stuff, you shouldn't be. We'll, we'll, we'll address that. Uh, also, I this is, yeah, this is not going to go, yeah. I think, I think we, <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. other, other comments. Mike Barry, 57 Miller Street. Um, my question is more about, let's say this all happens, let's say it takes occupancy, you guys grant this thing, yeah. and then five years later he decides to sell it. I understand the permit doesn't go with him, but there's still a bathroom and a structure that's in that building. Is there any requirement to, like, what do you have to do with it? Do you just leave it there and hope that whoever comes in doesn't use it next? Like, what's the... Well, I, 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 I don't, he could probably go and put a bathroom in there right now. I mean, he... Oh, could he? Yeah. yeah. What's that? That's what's on the plan. No, 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 no with, even without the special oh, permit. I guess right. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no. The new, um, he plan. could go do that. So it would just be yeah, and hang out and have that be his man cave or whatever. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank right. you. Right. I don't know. Yeah, right, no, that's no. not a. That's the. I saw the that's yeah, so that's the plan. This is not built yet. Yeah, once it gets zoned for business, 
it's not getting rezoned. No, it's not, not, it's not getting rezoned. No, no, no. It's not still going to be residential. No, it would still be a residential use. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, yeah. I have a question. John sure. Packley, at Elliott Street. Um, can, does the fire department sign off on this permit? Construction. Uh, do they weigh they, in on this permit, or could they weigh in? The fire department. Yeah. The fire department. Well, they would have to. The reason why I ask is, can you fit a fire truck down? That's, that's a common driveway. <laughs> but that's the question. I mean, like, that's what I've said. This is a bananas driveway. That's got to have been I'm asked at some point. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. we're not going to get into the discussion, but a fire truck does not need to actually access the driveway no. by code. Okay. They just need enough width to run a hose up. If it catches fire tomorrow. What are they going to do? Well, I, I'm just saying it, it's in the right now. Also, I'm just saying the back of your house, the back of the houses aren't accessible by vehicle necessarily. They don't do it that way for everything. Thank you. Uh, my role here, thank you, Seventy One Village. Uh, what is the town's definition of a residence? Certainly, a bathroom and a desk. Of a of a residence. Of a residential unit. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't understand the question. We didn't apply for a, a residence. Yeah, I don't there. understand your question. Well, if someone's going to be living there, would you expect? No one's going to be living there. Gonna be living there. Sorry, this is not this is not proposed as an apartment or so a home office without a home. No, the homes in the front of it. The homes in the other in the main building. Building in another town. No, come on now. Are you being sent on purpose here? <laughs> I so, um, uh, I I do I think that we're gonna continue this. Um, I agree. Well, uh, we're gonna continue this. I mean, the, it certainly, right? You have you, you've the being a resident, right? Yes. We, we can't we can't issue it. I wanted to make sure that we heard your heard everyone's comments, and we understand, and you understand what um, what uh, what the concerns are. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna continue it. Um, you figure out um, whether you want to sort of how you want to proceed whether you want to come back we could talk about if you want to come back we can talk about whether we can we are even able to issue it until later or or just come back once you are a resident understood so, um, so do you want to continue it to February or March or April or withdraw without prejudice or can I suggest I'll can I suggest this, um, that we continue it to February, and then within this next month, that you sort of figure out what your next step is, and then whether you want to then continue it, you know, sort of further on back, That'll further work. on down, or withdraw. That way you're not trying to make a decision sure. right here, right now. Excellent. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's All right. perfect. Um, so on the February agenda, um, At eight o'clock, I suppose. On the 10th? Right 10th, yeah. So move that the CBDC continue the public hearing for 21 23 special home activations February 10th at 8 p.m. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
is not special home occupation, it's what? It is. Special home occupation. Special home occupation. 5.6.7. Okay. The real reason that he's before you is because it's in an accessory building, which is not allowed for a regular home occupation. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's the special part. That's why it makes it special. Um, uh, next item on the agenda. Um, where are we here? Uh, 135, 139, and 149 are Howard Street uh, definitive subdivision plan. I don't care. No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Andy Street, Civil Design Consultants. <coughs> No one bought tickets for me tonight. <laughs> 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 yep, sorry, I just wanted to say. Um, so we were here a month ago, uh, gave a general presentation about kind of where we're at, the project's path we've taken, and, and where we're today. Um, I'll run through that again. I'll kind of give a, a, there's a few members who weren't here last time, so I'll kind of run through the, what the project is and what we're trying to accomplish. Do you want that? And then oh. you can slide through the whole thing. It's just That's great. I can zoom in. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, we started this about a year ago. I think it was about January of 2019. Um, went to Concom. We had a DRT. Uh, we came to this board in February. Um, since then, we've done kind of a lot of offline outside of the meeting room, some site visits, a lot with conservation, and some reviews there. And then the first real revision uh, to this plan set was what we presented uh, last month. So um, there's been no changes from last time. What we've been doing, we have, we've had hopefully final conservation comments for a few months now. Um, just last week, we got the engineer to weigh in, uh, fire departments weighed in, and so we're here tonight, uh, hopefully to get. Uh, feedback from this uh, this committee, this commission. Uh, take all of those, roll them into another set of plans that'll hopefully be before you next month. So that's just kind of a run through of the path we've taken. Um, what we're looking at for this project is about 350 feet of road accessed off of Howard Street. There's about I don't know 110 feet of frontage there or so on Howard. Uh, the 350 feet of road ends in a cul-de-sac, which will serve six house lots. Um, there's currently two houses here today, so we have a net increase of four houses on these on this property. Um, all of these new driveways will come off of this this new roadway. So we come in. Um, the the, the I'll, I'll get to the waivers in a little bit, but uh, six single-family homes all served off of this new roadway. Um, from a uh, stormwater perspective, we've got a portion of the road going to Howard. The rest flows back down the cul-de-sac to this area here, which is an infiltration basin. Um, that ultimately discharges this overflow to the wetlands which are on site located in kind of the northern piece of the property here and then we have a small pocket of uh, wetland there that is just locally jurisdictional it's not state regulated uh, from the utility perspective uh, it will tie into the sewer in Howard Street will tie into the water gas all of them come from Howard Street uh, these four lots in the back will all have sewer pumps that come to a manhole that then dumps into comes into Howard Street down there. Uh, water, like I said, will just tie in there. Uh, the portion that drains to Howard Street will kind of capture and treat down there as well. So um, we've submitted this. We're going to have street trees with the tree warden, all of that sort of thing. We'll, we'll come in at vertical granite curb. Um, we've looked at things like site distance and, and traffic and all that and feel like we, we can manage all those impacts as well. Uh, which we do we have here? The, the roadway right now we're proposing is 24 feet wide, standard pavement. Uh, the cul-de-sac head is 45 foot paved radius there, so that fully complies with the 24 is less from the standard 30. And then the right-of-way is, is 50 feet along the straight sections and then bumps out to a 60 foot cul-de-sac head there. So there, those two are two waivers there. The reduced pavement width is one thing that we're asking for, and then also that 50-foot right-of-way width for just the, the straight section, straight-ish section of the, of the new roadway there. Um, we're also asking for waivers uh, for a limited traffic study. I feel like the increase of four new homes is a pretty minimal traffic impact, uh, so we'd like that waiver. I mentioned the right-of-way width. Uh, currently, we have a, a deviation from the 
roadway cross section where the cul-de-sac head kind of slopes from the like a yeah, left side down to the right side to a single catch basin. So that would be a deviation that would be a waiver that we're looking for. We're not proposing any sidewalks along this, which is uh, consistent with what Howard Street has today. There's no sidewalks along Howard Street. It's actually pretty narrow out there as well, but no sidewalks on Howard Street. We've gotten rid of the landscaped island that the subdivision regs call for. That was at the request of the DPW. They don't, they don't like those apparently, the plows and all that. Uh, we're also not proposing street lighting as this plan stands today, which is a good portion of Howard Street as well. Uh, we've got a handful of kind of utility type waivers where we're not looping the water main. There's really kind of no feasible way. We're surrounded by residential, pretty tight, you know, pretty dense, not as dense as the last one, but then dense residential properties kind of surrounding this, this development. So we're not looping the water main. It will dead end in a hydrant down towards the end of the cul-de-sac. Uh, the force mains, which I mentioned, that would need a waiver as well. Um, and then we have a couple changes to the standard drainage um, requirements where we're providing less cover over this pipe here in particular than what the regs call for, but enough cover to meet manufacturer guidelines and kind of standard general engineering practices. And then these pipes from these stormwater facilities here are smaller than the 12 inch concrete pipes that the regs call for, but that's uh, what we're proposing is adequate for the amount of water that, that we'll receive. Um, I think in general, this is, uh, you know, the, the lots comply. Uh, we have enough area, frontage, uh, plenty of setback room to, to build these houses. Um, you know, the plant set has everything, the lotting plans and roadway plans. There's an erosion control plan in there now. We've added that, a, a tree a tree removal plan, which was a big piece of the conservation process, but I know um, can kind of double here with what the work will do with the tree warden. Uh, it's there. Um, stormwater, all that, we're, we're in compliance with DEP and, and local standards. There's just a couple minor comments left with conservation, really more of clarification type things than, than uh, design challenges, at least in my opinion. Um, and then with the town engineer and the fire department. Fire department's big concern or big comment, I guess, was really limited to this driveway, to lot four, the length of it and accessing up there. Um, it, it, the way I read it, it seems if we uh, make that driveway um, constructed suitable to handle a fire truck as far as strength and abilities, then they should be satisfied. So um, if and when we make changes, I think probably what we'll do is apply the same pavement cross section, the gravels and the asphalt from the roadway to that driveway as well. And I, I think you know we'll continue to work with them as they need to, but that was really their big comment. And then from the engineer, there, there wasn't anything too, um, too kind of heavy here either. Um, there was a recommendation to provide the 60-foot right-of-way, which I'm sure we'll get into tonight that came up last time. And then also uh, he mentioned this pavement width that uh, didn't really kind of commit one way or the other. On the one hand, it reduces impervious surface, which is better for runoff. Uh, but on the other hand, with 24 feet, it makes uh, on-street parking a, uh, a challenge. Other than that, I didn't, I didn't see anything too, too um, concerning that, that we can't work through and deal with there. But I think, like I said, the intent tonight, we have all these comments. Um, we'd like to kind of roll in anything this commission has directly and, and uh, get back to you with a, another set of revised plans. So like I said, this is really the first revision from the set we're here in January and the, the general layout, the number of lots, the, the geometry of the lots, all of that is really the same. We just kind of made some tweaks, kind of working through the conservation process really is where the changes came from and now we're back before you guys uh, open to push it forward. So I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Just a quick get me up to speed. Do we not go over this last time? Is that why we're doing this? I so thought we, we went did, over a lot. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. So what's different tonight from last time? I guess is where I'm mm -hmm. trying to. We have more comments, and I just wanted to mention from, 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 the, from the review, the, the plans comments. are the same. Nothing's changed. It's the same plan. We didn't resubmit anything. So <coughs> we have those comments. I, really, for me, I just want to make sure that we we, we seem to be near, ho well, hopefully nearing some sort of vote, um, and the hope is to kind of have everything uh, in order so we can address everybody all at once, hopefully, and, and come up with something that will uh, I just so Julie, is it usual for some of these cul-de-sacs to not have any street lighting? Um, it is normal um, for some of them not to have street lighting. However, like especially when they're you know less than a certain number of lots, 
Um, I've been receiving requests lately from people in town who live on cul-de-sacs for some lighting. Mm -hmm. So um, the conversation's kind of changing a little bit around that. And I know I wouldn't want to live on that one back there without a light in the cul-de-sac person. A couple things we've kicked around. I mean, we've, we've, this came up, I believe the police might even brought this up. At the, we just went to a DRT a month ago-ish, something like that. Either a, a light down here, like you were just saying, or, or even if we put kind of those um, residential six, eight foot high posts at the end of the driveways, each driveway or something like that, just to throw a little bit of light yeah. um, illuminated, but like still... You know, not make it feel like a busy street with you know, no, yeah. lights, you know, but add some character and some light at the same time. So we're kind of looking at that. Probably we'll roll something into the next next round of plans. Can you find out, Julie, um, what is the, what is on a <clears throat> non-cul-de-sac, but just a regular sort of residential through road, what is the spacing of lights that we typically have? Is it? But I can know? check. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then, you know, on a regular road, it's they're really important at crosswalks or at curves. Right, and, yes, you know, there's yeah, like yeah, certain things yes, like that. right. Um, but there's also, like, a yeah. pacing, yeah. But I, I'll check and see with that. Do you know the answer to that? I don't know of, but okay. I would agree to 150. <laughs> Sir, in passing, you mentioned water hydrants. Do you know where they're located and where they will be located? So we're proposing one hydrant at the end. Um, and thus far, that's been acceptable during the review. Yeah, so the, the water system, you know, just kind of follow down the center issue. That would be also accessible from that building that's, what, 65 feet back? This one here? Yeah, the hydrant would serve the, the whole development. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Fireworks did just say, they mentioned if the driver couldn't be adequate to the loading, then maybe this gets sprinkled or something like that, too. But I think if we make that driveway, make them more comfortable with the uh, composition of that driveway, then they, they should be satisfied, I think. Um, I, I think I had these two comments last time, and I think they still stand. Um, it is uh, uh, agreeing with with the engineer's comment um, about the need for the 60 foot right away. Yep. Um, and um, e even though right, it's not all getting paved, but um, but uh, who knows what will happen in the future. Um, and. Um, and then it sort of plays off his um, his non-committal comment about the pavement width is that what we've we've um, done in the past and and I uh, I think all the rationale behind it still stands is that um, leave the pavement width that at um, at 24 so you're not paving you know something wider but um, uh, enhance the the shoulders um, so that you can. Um, you know, with some um, hard pack kind of kind of a thing with loam on top, um, but so that you could pull off, a car could pull off or a fire truck can pull off onto the side without sinking into the into the to the dirt, which sort of means well two things. One is um, if if the if the right of way is wider, then the street trees could be pushed out more so that then the street trees right, aren't right at the curb edge, and then you can you could actually pull off um, to the side uh, onto the grass. Um, so, so just to sure. to address the right, I didn't mention this, but we can this this portion can become 60, and there's no changes to this project. It we all would have, I mean the right away would change, but the you, you would see you wouldn't know the difference if I showed you the plan next time because it would all look the same. It's just 10 feet wider in that stretch of roadway, so everything still Sex. works. Like, are you still? Yeah, well, no, you, I mean, well, yeah, we'd update all those lines, but the yeah. houses all fit. They all, everything okay. still works. Yeah, it, it really all works fine. Um, lot areas, all of that. It's It wouldn't change the project at all, other than, you know, a few dimensions that go with. Okay, right. and there wouldn't be additional easements for utilities that would be needed, like, because you, all your structures would still be outside of the layout. Yes. With the exception yeah. of the ones that you're expecting yeah. the town to. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, there would be no, it, it, our, we, we've got some other changes, like the engineer didn't like the, the super elevation, the sloped cul-de-sac, so we're going to tweak yeah. that so it'll look a little different there. <laughs> we'll tweak there. But um, as far as the, the lotting plan, the lot shapes, and the, for the most part, the grading and the stormwater, all of that will just be the same. It'll just, we'll just have a larger right. So that's something that 
commission prefers, we can do that. Yeah. Like the 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 bulb at the end would stay the same as um, as you have it now. Correct. I guess I'm I'm not I don't have as much of a strong opinion on that. I I hadn't really thought. Forty-five that much. foot radius minimum for the fire truck. Yeah. So yeah. that the bulb complies mm -hmm. today to what the subdivision regs say. Okay. It's just this this it's, uh, okay. the straight section that's right. now. Yeah. So I'm looking at the other engineering comment on the on the same thing here about on street parking. Mm -hmm. I agree that that's anybody parks on the street, then you basically block blocked two way traffic. Um, Left with 14 feet. Yes, you know, so block two way traffic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, is it the situation that you would? I can't see where the driveways are, but are they big enough? for at least one additional vehicle to park within the top of the driveway as a visitor? Yes. Yeah, the, the, so the garage you, is... I mean, you're never going to not have on-street parking unless you go to the police and have it banned. But at least if the driveways are long enough, you can reduce the possibility of it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would have to get get a scale out and everything, but but there's certainly there's good garage spaces, and then you have space behind them, and then there's even length. You could fit several cars in each of these each of these driveways for sure. And you know, Howard Street has parking, I believe, and that's yeah. But I, you know, I've never seen anything yeah. like it. But people just need to be exactly at the actual house that they're yeah. going to. Yeah, so, right, um, right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I just mean in sense of the the width and the concerns about width. I mean, Howard Street's narrow and has parking. You know, it's not ideal, but you know. It, make it work, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, I lived in but Somerville, it, I'm <laughs> But that's one of our questions. I mean, to, to us, you know, we just want the feedback. You know, are we proposing this? Is, is that a condition? Uh, you know what I mean? I, I'd hate to have something like that hang I, up. I don't kind of think it process, needs to be a you know? condition. I think it's a, you know, it's a question mark. I, I don't know. With the car parked there, then you do have access yeah, sure. issues. Yeah. Which is why I, th which is, which is why I do think that the enhanced shoulder, so that a car can pull sort of halfway off right, right, right. onto the grass. That's what we're talking about. From the looks yeah. of it, um, from the looks of it, it, it appears that you could park four cars on the paved areas of each house, and then have whatever's in the garages. They would be blocking each other. And yeah. That's, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah and that's the problem. problem. You know, it's just but that's four cars, four to five cars. You know, in at each house. The only one that's difficult is the the, the, the big long, the big long driveway. Yeah, it's just human behavior. Lots of cars, but they have to back up. Cars, oh. have to back <laughs> up. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Up there? Yeah. yeah, but they're all going to park. Yeah. I mean, if they were to park, they park along the the the, the bulb. The bulb. Anyway, so the, uh, the other thing, like that. So I don't know. With, with regards to the drainage design, and if you were to push, you know, push the layout out and then put, have the shoulders mountable, like, what are you doing with the curbing? Like, what's? Well, I was I was actually just going to ask that. I mean, I know, I know the regs want vertical granite, which is not really mountable. No. I mean, do you use slope granite in in town? I mean, that's that's the easy solution. I mean, we solution. have to talk to the town engineer about that. We have it was another subdivision that we, that we did where they did. Um, off of Franklin? Yes, it was, the, it was um, Lynetta Lane, where I think they did all, they had all their drainage kind of overflow yeah. into swales yeah, and stuff, right? They went for a and there was no curbing. Yeah. yeah, so there is some flexibility there if that design. Street no. has curbing. No. Um, I don't think no, no, but, but, has curbing. No. Yeah. but is it critical for your drainage? Design? Yeah, we, right, we would need the something there. I mean, we, we can't kind of swale all this. Yeah. Way. My right. standard is that we want. Uh, right. so we need some sort of. I mean, the, the slope ramp has an effect. Drainage so <laughs> but you bring it up. Tower Street. Yeah. Water. I mean, so yeah. if you can make the drainage design work, and that's you know this is a better design, the commission prefers, and the conservation commission's okay with it. I think the town engineer can get up. We can probably get up. Um, the police good with that? Mounting curbs and things. I mean, if you're providing, if you're doing it in order to provide room for people to park. So that it doesn't block emergency access, like yeah, yeah. just posing yeah. a question. Yeah. It seems like people do what they want when it comes down. Right. The I mean, yeah. right. I like right. that solution. It's a good solution. Yeah. Do what you suggest. Yeah.
Okay. So you're still addressing the town engineer's other comments on the waivers? Yeah, we just we received I think Thursday or Friday even something like that. So uh, yeah, so we'll work through those and get those back as we can to hopefully get more feedback by February with the situation. So. Other comments, concerns. Are you, are you with the, all right. Sure. Murphy Cojones, 56 Westcroft Road. You mentioned that you're raising the land six feet to build these houses. And so that would have to be graded. The street would have to be graded. And you mentioned about backing up a fire uh, engine. If it's raised up, how could they back up? The land's not gonna be even. It's gonna be raised. Up, it's going to be a hill, and it's going to have to be graded. And will that whole street be raised up too? So that would make more water coming out of the house. Okay. Yeah, please do. So, handful of parts to that. I'll see what I can do. But the the road itself is relatively flat, so it it comes up a little bit from the street, and then it, right now we're really just kind of going back very very shallowly to the. It's very small, very flat road is what it is. Uh, so these houses wind up getting higher just because we have we have groundwater issues out there and we have to keep them high enough so that the basements aren't in the groundwater. So they the houses get raised up. But the and the road itself isn't this big hill or a mile or anything like that. It kind of sits there pretty well. By the time you get to the back, it is higher than the ground is today. You know, several feet, four or five, you might be right in certain spots. This you know, there's four or five feet there, something like that. Um, regarding the water, so the water that is on the road winds up in this is a, a pond, just a big depression, really, is what we're digging out over here. So the water on the road gets here, and then if it doesn't go in the ground, it goes into the wetland as it would today. Now, so I have a question about that while sure. you're in the wetland. What about the uh, salt and sand that goes on that road? Is that salt going to end up in that water that's going to end up in the wetland? Well, that's so the salt and sand that would be on the road, I'm not quite sure what the town uses to to treat. I mean, the, the, the intent is this is publicly accepted roadway. So I'm not sure what the town's maintenance program is. But yeah, I mean, if it's captured here, you know, this is a catch basin. It's it's designed to have, have sediment and, and silts and things like that settle out into the bottom so that it specifically doesn't kind of keep making its way down the stream. So that's one check. This this has a, a four bay in the, so there's a this pond is kind of two sides to it. Okay. One one side is called the four bay where the water goes first and there's a whole bunch of stone that kind of divides it. Okay. So the intent is that any kind of sand and sediment and silt that goes into the pond winds up in that four bay and then doesn't make it to the next section and then since it didn't make it to the next section it doesn't make it to the well. So there's kind of a few checks and balances and the DEP which regulates these designs mm -hmm. looks at those sorts of things and for your reasons because it's obviously concerned yes, the sediment getting down. Is, so, uh, very sensitive area right we so we have kind of this treatment train designed to remove as much as that as we can before it makes it to the natural well thank you uh, I think I, I just have one more point to your question too so these houses get raised so we have you know a lot of the all these dark lines as how the topography looks and it looks bad because there's, there's a yeah. lot of them with kind of showing a lot of information um, but we've taken care to Make sure it's sloped either around the house into the road or around the house into the wetland, things like that. So we're not going off the property onto neighbors' properties there. It's all uh, being maintained on site. The water that goes off site for the design is, is either at the same level or less than it is today. Because a portion of this just goes straight back. You know what I mean? It's not like it's it's not contributing water somewhere today. So part of our design has to find out how much is going and then deal with that and make sure not there isn't more water going. Does that make sense? You had kind of a multi-part question there for me. Does that make sense? Answer your question. <laughs> and another question. Um, you're going up with the house. Is the house going to have a foundation? Yes. Those houses are oh, yeah. going to have a foundation. Yep. Yep. So it's going up six feet and then a foundation and then a house? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, the, these are all kind of sitting there on levelish pad. It's not like a walk. I don't think they're not walkouts or anything like that. Because so. if each of those bars is a foot, 
then you're going up six feet. Like in this case here? Yes. Yes. But behind it, it's, it's, this is, I can't spell it, simply flat. Behind it, it's the same elevation as it is in front. It is? Yeah. Oh, you mean Milton Road? No, the house itself. It's not like there's a big eight foot okay, exposed Okay, that's what I, I can't, yeah. I was thinking, you know, you're going up six feet, then putting a foundation, and then putting a house. So the, it's going to be enormous. There's a few feet back there, but it's not, you're not going to be staring in an eight foot concrete. Okay, yeah. okay. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. It's not level, I shouldn't say. It's a couple feet, but it's not. It's not, yeah. yeah, okay. It's not what I was thinking. It's not going to be, you're not going to end up 20, 30 no, feet no, by no. the time you're finished. Okay. No. Thank you. It looks like Howard Street's like at 164, and then like the top of the first, right, the, the top of the foundation of that f first house. Yeah, yeah. Lot, this one? Uh, no, down one. Yeah, um, is 168, so the top of the foundation will be four feet above Howard Street. Okay. So it's not that, I mean, it's okay. a little bit higher, but it's not, yeah. it's not first, too bad. And then the next one is 169 and then 169. So they'll, they'll be a little bit higher, but not, prob you not probably, that high. yeah, you probably yeah. won't even notice that by the time they grade it. Okay. A couple of questions. First, <coughs> I would definitely do a traffic study on Howard Street. There's far more traffic than I think anybody who doesn't live on Howard. I'm Bob Connor to live on 107 Howard Street. There's far more traffic on that road than most people realize. Uh, walking my dog, I've almost been hit a dozen times. My son was hit by a car riding his bicycle. So there's a lot of traffic and there's a lot of children. So I would definitely recommend a traffic study, especially as that opens up into Howard Street that the, the potential to cause a bottleneck right there because the person who lives across the street there still has every right just to park his car diagonally directly across from that. Maybe he's got a big SUV that's going to bottleneck that down even more. So uh, I would definitely in look into a traffic study for that. I also have a question with the retaining pond. What about mosquito control, uh, West Nile virus and things like that? That's a real, a real public health problem that the state has been looking into. So I think, I don't know if anyone's done a study on that because there's a little brook that abuts my property and they weren't going to do anything about the flooding that was causing until they were looking at this as a potential for mosquito breeding and that way they improve the drainage there. So if you have a pond of, sta of water just sitting there, and I don't know the flow rates or anything through there, but the potential for that for mosquito <coughs> breeding and then once again West Nile virus can be pretty high and it's a serious thing. And my last thing is you mentioned the drain on the front. Uh, you were either going with or without the 12 inch drains, I believe. Uh, pipes are smaller, yes. I would go with the bigger pipes just because there is a lot of water there. Uh, I, I think more the Conservation Commission realizes just how much water is on Howard Street and West Cross Street, how much water is there. Because initially, not only does it come down from the hill from Howard Street, uh, then it all flows in a north, almost westerly direction as to where a brook is that feeds into another brook that originally, I think, fed into the Abajona years ago before it all was disrupted. But uh, I would definitely look into larger drain pipes there too. So those are my three concerns. Sure. Speak to those. Yeah. So, so for the, to take you to and so for the traffic, yeah. we did a limited traffic study. Yeah. Um, with the point being to show that not that Howard Street doesn't have traffic problems. I'm not, but the, to show that there's a very minimal impact from the four new houses that will be coming. It, you know, what I mean? it's, it's well, not. Like that's a minimum of eight cars. Uh, that will be up to twelve once the kids get to sixteen. So. And that's a narrow road, you know, 12 more cars on that during the course of a day. You'd be surprised if you're there at noontime on a Tuesday afternoon, how much traffic there is on that road. So, so um, you know, in terms of traffic studies, um, right, there's, uh, right, you're going to notice the difference, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. You'll, you'll notice the difference. Um, but really, there's no, uh, typically, n no, uh, required action I'm not going to say by the town but right sort of the industry standard is it, it 
it, it's all about uh, sort of delay. Is there enough traffic so that you're delayed at intersections? And when we talk about a delay at intersections, we're not talking about three or five seconds. We're talking 30 seconds, 45 seconds a minute. I, I, I still don't, you know, the, the ton number of cars he, that would be generated here, you, you, pro, you, pro, you could notice it. Um, but it's not the types of delays that would then require the um, the the, um, the improvements that are are typically required. I, I'm going to say I think we probably had a traffic study done um, for the one for the new development over by um, um, Snowco. Gold Street, Eaton, Eaton Street, Lakeview. Eaton Lakeview. Yep. Um, you know the intersection there by um, Market Basket and um, Salem Five, right? All of that. You sort of add any more car or any stop sign into that, um, any stoplight, then you're talking about lots of cars being delayed, lots of minutes, and those are the sort of conditions where where um, traffic studies, um, the a development results in a in an impact big enough that we require it to be mitigated. So this is not to say, you know, you'll probably notice a couple more cars on it, but it's not to the degree that we would ever require, you know, sort of anyone to do sort of big uh, infrastructure improvements. Um, but what what he did and what, what sort of the, the traffic issue that is often more of note and I'm going to say we look at um, for something like this are those safety issues that you brought up, um, you know, sight lines at that intersection um, and, well, and those sorts of things. So, like when but those don't require a traffic study. That's that's more design related. But will there be like a street light when that street opens up into Howard Street? Will there be a street light there to, to illuminate that intersection? Um, street right light there, yeah, road. it's right there, yeah. We're not proposing it today. Uh, I mean, I think. Do you mean like an illumination? Like a, like a, a not, not like. <laughs> not like, not like a. Not a red, red light. No. No, but a, a lamp. A illumination. Lamp, for yeah. For lack of a better term, to yeah. illuminate the intersection, so, uh, so somebody doesn't get, for lack of a better term, yeah. whacked yeah. just yeah. walking down the street, or you know, people aren't the best of drivers, and the potential for somebody coming out of there. Will there be a stop sign there? That's something we've been discussing with the town engineer. Yeah, yeah. If so if there, it or not. Uh, if you don't have a stop sign and it's not illuminated by a street lamp, the potential for an accident increases dramatically than if you have a street lamp and a stop sign there that will slow that down. You know, and no, plus, like I said, there's a lot of kids with bikes. <laughs> 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 the corner of Southgate and Walnut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty dark. There's no, nobody wants to put a light there, but there's no accidents either. Well, so, so it only takes one to ruin the people involved's life. Well, that's so, you know. one in 2030. Ah, uh, so those would be two yeah. good things. Yeah. Um, your question about the basin. Yeah. So, yeah. so the basin. Part of what the design standards we have to make sure it drains within 72 hours. Okay. Partly for that reason of yeah. mosquito control. So it's not designed to hold water and keep water. Mm -hmm. It's designed to capture a certain amount of water, put it in the ground, and then dump it in the wetland if it need be. Okay. So I would think you've got a better chance of those wetlands being your mosquito problem than yeah. the basin right But there. I didn't know what the. So, so that's a consideration. That's part of our calculations and, and what we have to provide. So that, that issue is, is looked at. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what your third question was. The third one was the drain oh, pipes here. So, yeah. So the, the, these two things are, are designed to catch uh, really from this portion of the road down. So it's a very small area, which okay. is why we proposed the very small pipes. Anything in Howard Street, I mean, there's a, there's a drain basin right here. Yeah. So anything in Howard Street is supposed to, does, will maintain whatever it does today and stay in Howard Street and get caught in the town's drain system today. So the reason this, these are both very small and the reason the pipes are small is because it's just a very small amount. So where is that water draining to? These two pipes tie into the town system. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're showing today. Okay. And we're, this, this is a comment from the engineer. This whole little configuration we're working on too, but just so you know the rationale behind the pipes. And all yeah. That. Questions, comments? Nice job, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So can I just get just one last clarification? Sure. So we 
the 60 foot right of way is that what we're pursuing is that the feeling I'm getting here yeah okay no. 60 foot right of way leave the pavement maybe some slope granite throw that out there and see for mountable some sort of mountable mm -hmm. curb mm -hmm. would be the idea and um, we'll go with that okay and then we'll work through these comments and street lighting. Street lighting. Street some street lighting of some sort. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. So we want to continue this till. I think so. Yeah. Um, eight thirty on February tenth. Does that work for you? Eight thirty. Is that what you said? Sure. Yeah. CPDC continue the public hearing for 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street to February 10th at 8.30 p.m. Second, David. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I did, but we need to then, we need to vote on that. It's not going to be happening. So you can just pick it up. Okay. <laughs> G45 is fine. Like, it's the end. I mean, the, the yeah. one about her who calls me, like, on a weekly basis. Yeah. So. so I move that the CPDC continue the public hearings for to Main Street, February 10th at 846 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. All right. That's a good um, yeah, no, that was nailed every. Yeah, no, he had it. Yeah. Do we. So it is. Watch him. <laughs> and I wanted to. Um, so the South Main Street Design Best Practices discussion, we're going to wait till next time. We don't have a lot of time to. Um, the, the discussion about that is just like make, seeing if any updates to them are needed based on the zoning we just put in place mm -hmm. down on South Main Street. So we need a little more time on that. Um, I don't know where Andrew went, but uh, we did get feedback from the state on the downtown Smart Growth District design guidelines in there. They have a couple concerns, um, which I wanted to, sh I have some ideas for how to work through them, but I wanted to share them with you guys. Um, should we be taking this offline and in writing? Sorry? Or is there general discussion? I'll just show you the uh, updates and then we can talk about what we want to do. And I'm sorry, maybe question. Are those draft design guidelines already online so I can just... They are, actually. I'm um, really good at finding stuff that I need to look for. <laughs> and, and I just got the feedback, um, so I it wasn't in your packet. Um, so we have a document I'm just going to show you now. Oh, you opened them already. It's right here on the screen. You can see that. Okay. It's 10 steps ahead. Smart that, Andrew. Yeah. So they're mostly fine. Um, and the first issue comes up. Can you erase um, the next red line? <laughs> Yeah. And then I noticed there was some like other stuff lingering yeah, on the yeah. board. I don't know what that's from. Yeah, because the blinking is not too distracting. <laughs> so the first issue, and let's blow this up a little bit. So whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> what? What? Just go to the comments and just. I should just search for right, right here. It's right here. Um, I'll just click on that. Okay, so. Up. Well, oh yeah. Okay. I think we need a curfew for us. Um, we added. So I'll just give you a reminder. So last time we met, and I, because I had to go back and like figure out when this language got put in, we had a big condition in section ten under like d additional design standards for um, projects in transitional areas that included like parking and loading and all that and. We separated it out into the proper sections where it belongs. Now, that doesn't mean that the language would have been fine the way it was before, because it probably wouldn't have. But this sentence here that's highlighted, 
Additional parking above and beyond requirements in zoning bylaw section 10.5 may be required for projects proposed in the district is problematic because according to um, you get why it's problematic. Like really we should update zoning. If we're going to require more parking we should update zoning. Yes. Really. So um, but given like everything else that we're requiring and the fact that we're asking for a comprehensive parking plan to show how parking will work especially if there's commercial uses i don't think we necessarily need this language in here so i was proposing we just get rid of it all together <laughs> go for it uh that's a good suggestion so that's one to sleep on right yeah mm -hmm. but you can sleep on it only if you're going to get back to me yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my feedback is take it out yeah after you sleep, because I want to. I my goal is to get these approved before we get new projects. Yep. And they're coming soon, I think. So. Look, the intent to that statement was what that we some use that they propose or some some way they're using the property work by just providing X parking spaces, right? Right. So, like, like yeah, in the, the study we require 1.25 spaces per residential unit, right? But we don't require parking for most commercial uses. And this was going to kind of try to get at that, like in some instances, parking for the commercial uses may be needed. I think that's kind of um, like foreshadowing. It's enough. <laughs> like the problem with Fusilli, because they don't have adequate parking. That's a commercial use, isn't it? So that's not in the downtown. You said Fusilli. That's not in the downtown Smart Growth District. Um, okay. So that's a whole other issue. Um, so the bank. The way I see it. It's a whole separate issue. Um, all right, and then the other issues were down in section ten, which is the section that we added. Um, well, let me go, let me roll back to that because I think that that, that is a, a valid a valid point, <clears throat> but I think that the problem there is that it says that we may require more than we already require. Right, that's right. And, and I think that what we probably mean to say is, or try this on, that um, you know, if, um, if it's demonstrated, um, that may not be the right word, but l let me roll with it for a second. If it's demonstrated that the impacts of the development um, uh, unduly if, if the parking unduly impacts the surrounding neighborhood, additional um, a, additional parking should be considered. Yeah, so let me just get to the next comments. Because <laughs> right, because if we tie it back to the impact, not that we're requiring them, right. but, but if we see that they're going to impact things, then, then they need to consider more. Right. It's so just they different had, like, than us They required. had concerns with our use of the word consider. Right. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, I can't see what they tie back to these comments. Oh, yes, okay. So, the first comment here is talking about the use of the word complementary. It seems too vague and up to interpretation to qualify as a standard. It's more of a guiding principle. So this comment he makes a lot about about many of the things in this section. Um, because the, So this is section 10, which we call... Oh, this doesn't have my... Oh, it does. Okay, because I changed it. So it's not showing up there. So I had made some changes. So this section was called additional standards for district edges and transitional areas, and I thought maybe we just change it to additional considerations. That way we can use the word consider. Oh, oh. Right? Like, so they, a lot of his comments are like, this isn't a standard. This is too vague. Yeah. So if I if we change the whole, and that, this is like my simple fix yes, yeah. for the problem. <laughs> is we, um, and so I sent it back to them today, and they said they would review it tomorrow and let me know what they think. Right. So anyway, but that was one way to fix that. And then he w he t kept he was saying how a lot of the things in here are um, not standards; they're not really parameters; they're more like guiding principles. So it, along those same lines, I changed the word here, 
parameters to principles. Um, and then this one I took a piece out because this again goes, it's about setbacks and stepbacks. Um, and the first sentence proposed set, setbacks, stepbacks, and facade treatments shall address directly abutting properties maybe sums it up. Um, but we go above and beyond that and say additional setbacks and stepbacks above and beyond section 10.5 may be required depending on project adjacencies. And he feels like that's too vague and we should really change the zoning if we're going to do that. So I thought maybe again we just get rid of it and. Um, and we have 500 sections to deal with every single unique. <laughs> we do. We have so much language to protect the abutting structures yeah, yeah, and yeah, uses yeah, and properties yeah. and owners and abutters and, you know. So. Um, so here, again, it's just a list of him saying the word complementary is too vague. Um, considering the impacts is more of a guiding principle than a standard, and I agree. Um, and so I think this is all of them, yeah. And so again, my fix was just to kind of change a couple of the headings. And so we're not calling it standards, um, we're calling it considerations. And see. So it, I think it's a great um, solution but in terms of a developer looking at this, what does a consideration mean in terms of what I have to do and what I should do? So I don't, I think from a developer's standpoint, and that's a good question, they're already reading the word consideration in every single one of these. So whether they remember this, the title, whether they read this or remember this title, when they actually look and see what we're saying, we say shall be considered in every single one. So it's it's already considerations. When they write their narrative, they'll address all of these points and tell us how or how, why, why they yeah. consider they yeah. how they consider. I mean I'm just I'm thinking about the Gould Street conversation mm -hmm. where there was a lot of like backstops where, you know, the rules gave the developer some push, push back in some ways because they didn't say they could have they that they didn't have to do something or they had to do something. And so I just, you know, I think that there's going to be someone, I, Julie, I think the sleight of hand is, is there, but there is going to be someone that's be like, well, but I don't have to. Right, <laughs> but, but they don't, but have, to. They don't have to do any of it. it we yeah. didn't change any of the zoning yet. Right? Oh, so that's right. These says, are guiding. If it says 15 feet from here, mm -hmm. um, that's what it has to be. The it additional consideration is, well, here's an odd condition. Uh, it's a weird shaped lot and there's a residence here and a commercial building here. What's the consideration for how you're going to address that 15 feet, you know, around that special corner or something? Okay. And, and the Gould Street developer, you know, he did that. He considered all these things and he and he increased setbacks and he he did and but there was a point that he was also like this is what the rules say so right. this is what yeah, i'm right. allowed to do right. you know and so right. that's what i'm like but, which, I think but was, with which, which i think was good and fine it was good i'm just saying that if if these are important to us we might get that same type of push that says i don't have to but with anything in this entire document, they're still going to... I understand. Right, yeah, right. I, I guess this I didn't think thing. about that whole Yeah, premise. this whole yeah. thing is like, yeah. I, this is guidance. Yeah, it's guidance. Right. Yeah. Well, this is... I'm sorry to ask such a sure. basic question. I promise I will read this. No, no, no. Lots of them. No, no. Lots of them. No. No. Are good. So, you know, it, some, sometimes there, there are documents that have standards, and those are hard, fast, and then guidelines, and those are kind of the things that fit into considerations. I guess my overarching question is, you know, are the standards actually standards in this, or is it all kind of in the realm of guidelines, considerations, this is what we prefer? Uh, so... It's layers. No, no, that's a good question. That's a good question. Right that's a good question. So that, no, that's a good question. So, right, there's the zoning. <laughs> yeah. right. There's the zoning. Um, <laughs> this, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you want to tell no, me? I was going to say, this document, if you look at the title, actually is both. Right, right. So, um, the the, the, and I was catching that, where the title says standards and guidelines. So I'm wondering if things that are guideline-ish, if we put them in guidelines and other things, are they actually standards? In regular zoning. We don't really have a lot of <coughs> control over these sort of design right. guidelines. Right. We can't impose anything. It's 15 right. feet from the side and 20 feet from the back or whatever. That's what it is. The <coughs> carrot and the stick with smart growth is that we're allowed to impose standards and guidelines. We get better design. We get a little more say about what something might be. Yeah. So it's both. I see. And it's right. really the only, only zoning mechanism, one of the very few zoning mechanisms you have 
the ability to impose some of these standards and guidelines. So some of the standards are set fast, you know, this, this, uh, the number of units uh, affordable, the lot coverage, setbacks, and all that. And then the guidelines are things like we, we kind of want it to look like New England vernacular and address these things and break up the facade. And we let them figure out how to do that. So with that, my, my overall input um, would be you where know, where where the feedback has been. This is too vague. If if the concept is really important, maybe rather than remove it wholesale, figure out whether or not it it, it goes up into the, the principles. Some make sure that we're capturing the concept somewhere if it's been really important, rather than just dropping it. Right. Yeah, I think we are. We are. Okay. I think the the things we're taking out are covered in many different other places yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, it's sort of it's like a base covering it was like yeah. and and everything yeah. else too. Yeah. Um, also uh, one has to go to town meeting one doesn't. Yeah, yeah and so like we can up, <laughs> this commission can update this document however much they want whenever they want. Um, we don't even have to have a public hearing to update it whereas like any changes to zoning have to go to town meeting. So it's a little a bit of an easier process. So, if you guys are okay with these changes, I'll submit them to the state. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Works. I guess I would see, I, I will leave it to you, but I would see whether the one on parking, whether there's something that we could do to, okay. to, um, right, because the point there, which I don't think it's covered anywhere else, that's the difference. But if we get the parking plan, right. it doesn't necessarily mean we can require more but we can make sure it's going to work I mean to the best extent that yes. we can we can make sure it's yeah. going to work and parking plans are a requirement of the submittal is there is there a way to tighten it up though I mean look there's the parking plan and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you know the, the feedback that that was given is this is way too broad and I'm also think I hear that there are really many situations where when you factor all things in a, this body might want to require additional parking. So I guess I'm wondering, are there is there a way to describe you know, the factors? What, what would make this body say that there's additional parking so that there's, it makes it a little less vague by right. having at least a description of the trigger? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, rather, if, 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 if this group thinks that that might be something that comes along where we would say, yeah, you really need more parking, what would put us into that space? Depends on the the usage yeah. for right. the building. I mean, whether it's go. a dance studio or a group of accountants. Nice. The, the, I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. It would be nice if that was. Yeah, that that we don't want to. Um, we're trying to keep it open. Yeah. Because we can't imagine. No. Everything. We don't want to box ourselves in. Yes. Right. Yeah. But we know it happens. I mean, we know that that right that that's where they all push is on parking yeah. Um, the top. yeah so we want to still have that that card to say yeah I know it's 1.25 but in this condition we're gonna ask for more require more yeah and, and that even that's gonna be it's so tricky to do really like unless we change the zoning more, yeah. it's so tricky to yeah. do that um, but like you know, we do see developments where they're providing more because they know that more is going to make their space more, yeah. you know, not downtown, but, right, um, right. you know, Other the places, housing yeah. project that we just looked at tonight, it has two per unit instead of 1.5. So, I don't know. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we don't need to push it. Maybe that's just too... Well, so, and the feedback, I should say, this feedback was they gave it a quick... I was pushing, 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 like... Well, you know, like many weeks went by, they ignored me, and then finally they were like, "Oh, we gave it a quick look. Here's some thoughts. We're gonna look at it in more detail tomorrow." So I'm like, "There might be more coming." All right. <laughs> um, well, all right. for the parking, can you add something to um, say that basically uh, all parking plans submitted must adequately address the, the necessity based on the usage factors. Usage. Usage. On 
granted, it's vague, well, but it's, it's vague. Occupancy. Vague, basically saying that, well, depending on what you're doing, we may require more parking, but it's you have to show us that it's going to be adequate for the uses intended. So, this if is. If you're going to have a movie theater, you need more parking than. Based on, that's based on occupancy. Yeah. So, we don't require any commercial parking. What? We don't require commercial parking. Well, okay. so this is, we require a plan, though. So they have to figure out how they're dealing with commercial spaces and commercial employees. And that might mean they have to add commercial parking. Like this plan. Well, that, I think that's where we fall down. They say you have a plan. It doesn't say that we, the plan has to um, no. has to address. Right. So maybe that's the that's the statement that in conditions where the plan doesn't fully uh, uh, doesn't adequately doesn't I don't know if we want to say fully or adequately meet the projected demand. Um, additional on-site on parking may be required. So I Would just, be required. I do think it's tricky though because like like with m most of these projects downtown that we've recently approved, they yeah. don't know who their tenants are going to be. They don't know exactly what types of use they're going to have. Yeah. And so it's no, they right. It's part of it's a game. You no, know, it is right. It's part a, of it's a game. Yeah. But they also know. Right. They they know they, yeah. they know if they're going to design a. A, a restaurant, a fifty, uh, a fifty-seat restaurant, or a movie theater, or some, you know, or a shop, or a shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those all have different, <coughs> yeah. you know. So they don't know exactly, right? The restaurant might be probably not anymore, but right, it's traffic generated by Dunkin' Donuts before there's one everywhere. But used to be a lot different than any other restaurant, and you can't. So, you don't know that, like right? a rest restaurant and retail, zero space is required. So, like they might have a plan for their commercial parking, where they say we're going to do a restaurant and a retail space, and you don't require any zoning, and that's how we're dealing with it. You, you don't require any parking, and that's how we're dealing with it. We were we were matching what's happening with the regular business B, just B, right? Because they're allowed to exempt themselves if they're within three hundred feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that now we're starting to think, well, we can't really do that anymore. Can't yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, maybe it is worth looking at the zoning and, and you know, I don't know, because I don't know a way around it. Like, But the reason I thought for the zero was because the assumption is that you could use some of your residential parking to cover your business during the day when people aren't around. No, I don't think I, the the reason for the yeah. zero is that for a long time, you the the assumption was you know what will the town will take care of parking and there's lots sort of spread around and they'll all they'll all use that. I think we might get be getting to that point where that isn't the case anymore, and I guess sort of the next step with that parking plan is that I would I would I think that we're probably to that place where you say, okay, you're not required to have any on-site parking for your restaurant, but prove to me that there's adequate space in that municipal lot to accommodate the, you know, the 25 extra customers that are going to be parking in that lot. So do a usage study, an occupancy study on that, and, um, you know, what other occupancy so studies on all the parking. I mean, I think that's where we, we essentially need to go pretty probably within the next we should years. add that in there parking plan including usage study utilization mm. of whatever the wording yeah. you just said is do you want to throw that in there as a stopping yeah um Dude. so it's not just a, a token parking plan to check a box like it's a real you know don't you think that, I mean, we need to... Yes. We, yes, we do. Yes. I mean, employee, like, employee parking for the commercial uses is probably the biggest... The parking plan, including... Uh, issue. Utilization of municipal lots and or and uh, shared parking arrangements. Sorry, can you say that one more time? Parking plan. Sure. Um, 
I'll try. <laughs> a parking plan including yeah. utilization yeah. of municipal lots and shared parking arrangements. So now, now they're showing us how they're using those two particular mechanisms to uh, address the use that they want to propose. Uh, on street parking. Well, yeah, municipal yeah. lots, comma, on street parking and shared parking. Yeah. Or municipal spaces. I think if we can, yeah. if it's a two, they'll. Yeah, I mean, they. What, yeah. I think what we really want is for them to think about it, and not just be like, "Look, zoning doesn't ask for it. It's going to be fine. It's down." It's their, now it's their problem. It's their problem, right? Yeah. Right. And I think with that, I would agree. We can get rid of the other. Yeah. So it's good we we really hash this one out. Can I, I had <clears throat> parking needs four proposed commercial spaces and employees. I don't know why that distinction is important to me, but it just feels more accurate. Sure. Yeah, part instead of of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have some town meeting in me, you know. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, and we have minutes from November fourth. We can. That we can skip. <laughs> Do you want, yeah. Yeah. We want to move on. It's 10.37. I have one issue. That's my bed. Oh, I know. <laughs> the mortgage place next to the Gray's, yeah. you know, the old gas station, did you see the lighting they put on that thing? It's just floods. There's like 20 of them that just face up the place of the space. You're talking about the, right on, down on Main Street, the tower home Yeah, is that what it's called? Tower yeah. Home. You know, the guys that had to change their siding. Yes, yeah. Yeah. They okay. didn't put the lights there. Well, well, they're, crazy. that's good to know. <laughs> they're going to try to get their final. You can see it from Summer Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good to know. Yeah, that's good to know. Thanks. They <laughs> aren't done yet. <laughs> they don't have their final occupancy yet, um, so. It's the old gas station lot that's next to the Bay Bank. Not the Bay Bank. Wow. That's next to the um, Bank of America. Bank of America. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 And Gray's Auto. Enterprise. And enterprise. enterprise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're supposed to have canopies and next, or at the very least, the light should be shielded, but they're not. They're just like wall packs that face up. There's four on each side and five across the front. I'm stuck for what I know that that woman gave you trouble last time when you started telling oh, yeah. her she wasn't Signing. making the site plan that yeah. approved. If she gives you trouble, then let me talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> no problem being we got that. this, yeah. Sounds about right. Um, Let's close it officially. Anything? I mean, I can give you guys a couple of planning updates. Oh, good. Sure. Sure. Things that are happening. Yeah. We're, um, like I like to say, we're trying to solve all of Reading's problems at one time in the Planning and Economic Development Office. Um, so just a little update. I don't know if some of you or all of you have heard that we are um, Repaving, you know, we're repaving Main Street right now. We're in the process of it, and I shouldn't say we; I should say the state, because it's actually the parts of Main Street that the town doesn't own. Um, and they are, we're very deep into talks about doing a trial road diet on both sections of Main Street. Um, and so, a road diet is basically a restriping plan to go from four lanes to three in certain locations. Um, many of the intersections will say more or less as they are today, um, except. Um, with the restriping plan that goes from four to three, though, there will be accommodations for bike lanes on both sides. Um, the goals are to um, reduce the severity and frequency of head-on crashes by taking away the double threat of having so, you know, if you're making a left-hand turn, right now you have to cross two lanes, um, or three lanes even sometimes. Um, and then also to reduce off-peak travel speeds. Um, but at the same time, without reducing people's travel times like beyond certain thresholds so like you know there's they have certain tolerances i guess for what what's acceptable um and then also to add multiple different modes to the street so it's not just for cars but it's for other types of um users so making it safer for biking and um 
slowing speeds will make it a little more pedestrian friendly. So the trial periods um, for both sections are planned for the, um, this coming construction season. So um, they're hoping to have the striping for the trial road diet d done in um, like April, May, June, and then you know get a few weeks of data when school's in session, leave it over the summer, gather so people really get used to it, it normalizes a little bit and get more data, you know, right when school's back in session in, in the fall. Um, and then, you know, during that time, because it's like real-time data that can be analyzed, like as we go, we'll be assessing whether we think it's a good plan and we should permanently stripe it that way. And then the goal um, for the state is that they'll have the final striping done by Halloween. Um, so that's coming. We're working on public engagement and there should be, I'm trying to coordinate an all day open house in March where there'll be, you know, boards and information and videos and this has, you know, been done across the country. It's not new. Um, we will be one of the first towns within District 4. Um, Arlington, the town I live in, actually did it a few years ago um, on a section of Mass Ave. Um, but there are, there's a lot of information and videos out there that kind of talks about the reasons for doing it, the benefits. Um, and uh, for us here in Reading, we're lucky that we have the opportunity to do it for a trial period because we can really gather data about how it will work in real time and, and either you know bust myths or prove you know things out that you know the fears that people have about this. We'll still actually see like how it works in reality and whether it's a good idea or whether tweaks are needed um, as we go. So. So that's coming. Um, that's the big update. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. So we're working on uh, Andrew and I very closely are, are like you know working on rearranging the downtown parking system and kind of redesigning how it works so that it's accessible to all users and empowers people versus penalizes them. So, um, and by that I mean you know providing kiosks so that you can pay to stay rather than worrying about getting a ticket. Um, and there are many different moving parts to the current system, and so we're trying to figure out some ways we can kind of bundle some changes together in a way that makes sense. Um, and I'll be presenting what we've come up with to the select board on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So we did a beginning presentation to them in October. So if, if any of you are interested in seeing like kind of where we started and the justifications and rationale behind it and what the feedback was that we got at that time, October 29th, um, select board meeting. And so now we're doing follow up. Um, and we've worked with a consultant. We did a survey of the downtown businesses to get, to get feedback. And so we're incorporating it all together. We're, it's a big group of town staff. It's not just the two of us that are working on it, um, meeting every week, like hammering out the details making sure we're all on the same page so we go to the select board as a unified front that well you know across departments we think that these that this solution can work so that's coming yeah those are the big things <coughs> do we do yeah. have to put on a uh, from tonight's earlier meeting do we need to make changes to the uh, personal wireless carrier regulations um I left before the meeting ended, so I don't know what I might have missed. But So what he's talking about is another thing that's happening right now in town, um, which is that the, the town has had a proposal um, from a third party company that hosts um, wireless carriers for new poles in town to, to uh, uh, deploy currently 4G technology, but potentially also 5G technology in the near future. Um, and the FCC came out with a ruling back in 2018 that you know puts a, a limited time frame on towns to review these kind of things. They call it the shot clock, and gives towns very little leverage over um, where they go and how they can be regulated. Um, and a lot of you know wireless carriers are looking at putting them on like public um, utility poles because it's they're kind of outside of zoning, and so it's a way of getting approval quickly without going through a zoning process. Um, and without having to build their own structures. Well, sometimes the poles are, are needed. Um, so that's a big question that's, that we're talking about here. Um, but 
back in April, the town manager did promulgate regulations for the town of Reading. So we actually do have some guidelines for you know aesthetics and, and um, favorable locations for these poles, and it's a whole like five-page document um, that you know we're asking this company to comply with, um, as well as exploring the feasibility of locating on RMLD poles that exist already. So that's. Um, that poll hearing happened just earlier tonight, um, and a lot of good questions were asked by the people that were there. Um, but if you think some of ours are long, an hour and a half on two poles. Oh, that's yeah, I mean, well, like it is a new kind of yeah. new thing for people to wrap their minds around, and it is, you know, there's a lot of different considerations, and 5G comes with, you know, concerns on many levels, so, you know, health, safety. Um, proliferation concerns like are we going to end up with these poles every 150 feet or, or more are we going to end up with you know well, my not just poles but like boxes and yeah. antennas and infrastructure and, and things that buzz yeah. so my yeah my concern is downtown where we've worked hard to get everything underground mm -hmm. and now what they're going to come in and start dropping poles every 100 feet yeah it's it's tricky we um the rooftops. You know, they like to have the water towers where before. you are for deployment of smart cities and autonomous vehicles and and the range, what did you say, a quarter mile to a half mile? Yeah. Range. So they're micro cells and they're as micro opposed cells, to the, yeah. the macro cells. That you need. So instead of putting you know, it on the water tower that'll yeah. reach out for five miles, they're putting up little ones that'll reach yeah. out for half a mile to help with the bandwidth. Yeah. So something that we're like on the cusp of the actually photos from the days when thousands of cables crowded the skies mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Julie I've got a question sure. that's probably way off base do we have any restrictions about real estate people using drones to film the property I that is regulated by um, the, the FAA, FAA, the FAA yeah. regulates drones. drone usage. Um, uh, yeah, it hasn't come down to the state. States can't. I mean, state, states and local municipalities have absolutely no authority. It's it's wow. federal air. Yeah. It's airspace. If somebody stopped, parked in front of my house, had yeah. their got out of their vehicle. There's somebody driving. Somebody yeah. operating up above. Scott Nichols' house was filming because yep. he brought it back down, took out a disc, drove away. So I don't know what that was about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't get out there fast so enough. That that will be coming. I mean, yeah. there 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 will end up being regulations on when, where, yeah, and I how. I think right now it's a certain class size drone. Yeah, yeah. Class yeah. yeah. It's it's only this big. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, and then there's there's yeah. areas where you're just not allowed to to, to, to use them like it near any oh, airports. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, if we were Bedford, we wouldn't, you couldn't use yeah. it. Right. You know, your Lexington, you can't because it, it really is yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> we need an airport. Oh, thank you. I'm going to go with no on that one. Yeah. Um, but those regulations will end up coming once, like, oh, Uber starts yes. delivering packages. You should say yours, too. So, By you know, is it okay to deliver a package over, over your house if it's going to your neighbors? And we're submitting a grant tomorrow for... Well, there's more stuff we can tell you about because we're doing everything at once. Um, we have, an, or we have a, an initiative that's been going on since the summer. Um, pursuant to a grant we got last year to establish a downtown district management organization, so like a Main Streets organization or a business improvement district, um, and we're working with a consultant on that. And we submitted a grant just last week to get additional funding this year to continue working with the consultant because launching one of these things takes one year. It's not, you know, it's it's a multi-stakeholder kind of engagement process. With us. we did a big survey, we did a big like pop-up event. We we're, we're trying to get as much buy-in and input as we can. Um, so that's going to continue, hopefully, um, with hopefully with or without the grant money, but um, hopefully with the grant money. And then Andrew is submitting a grant. 
of the MVP application, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness. So if we get the grant and go through the planning process, we could then apply for further grants for infrastructure updates to stormwater and drainage and or policy regulations like our subdivision regulations. So hopefully we get that too. I'm really glad to hear that. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Well, in part, I, it, it recently came to my attention just through my work that like 70% of this, of this oh, yeah. it's like a very high have high. done this planning grant and there's money at the table mm -hmm. that will continue to be money. So I'm really glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Lots of things going on at CPDC. Cool. Adjourn? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. I'll vote in favor.